Central Florida visits Tuscaloosa for homecoming at the Capstone, and the Golden Knights come in with high hopes. UCF has big play potential on offense and looks to create confusion with an aggressive, multiple look on defense. The Crimson Tide will try to slow down the Golden Knights today and rebound from the disappointing loss to Tennessee last week. The offense looks to pick up the intensity today after a sluggish performance against the Vols. Alabama, UCF, live on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. A beautiful but warm day in Tuscaloosa as we welcome you to Bryant-Denny Stadium. Homecoming here at the Capstone. It's Alabama and UCLA, uh, UCF. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuscaloosa. David Crane along with Doug Layton. Glad you're with us here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. Doug, Alabama coming in off the loss to Tennessee. Disappointing for a lot of reasons, primarily because it was Tennessee, but also because not a real inspired performance by the team, especially on offense. Nope, that was the sixth consecutive loss to Tennessee, and that really hurt the feelings of this uh, Alabama squad. But they've really got to get on the ball quickly today. They have to eliminate UCF any thinking that they might pull off an upset. Central Florida, a scary opponent for Alabama right now. They come in 5-3 and three and pretty high. One of the reasons, a high-powered offense, Tyson Henson, a wide receiver, a big-time threat. That's right. Henson uh, separated his shoulder in practice, but uh, he'll still see plenty of action today, and he is the favorite target of uh, Schneider, no doubt about that. For Alabama, the defense played pretty well against the Volunteers last week. Six sacks in the game, and this man, Jarrett Johnson, had two of them. Actually, they really harassed the quarterback uh, all afternoon long in Tennessee, and they've got to do the same thing today against Snyder. They've really got to get after that young man and let him know that this is Alabama they're playing. Jared Johnson, a great game last week. He's had to move around on the defensive line, expected to start at right tackle again today. Well, as we said, of course, tough loss for Alabama last week, but because the way the SEC has shaken out this year, anything is still possible for the Crimson Tide, but time is running out. The Tide's sixth straight loss to Tennessee has left the team in a precarious position, to say the least. With four games remaining and a record of three and four, the possibilities for the 2000 season are still limitless. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, you want to stay positive and you want to make the best of our season and try to, you know, do what we can to, you know, uh, save the season. And uh, coming off a lose, um, especially at Tennessee, it's, it's kind of hard. And you know, we expect to really to get, get back where we want to be. And we're not going to give up. I don't care what. We're not going to give up. So we're just going to continue to play. While there may have been some emotion lacking on the field against the Vols, primarily by the offense, there was plenty in the locker room after the game and at the team meeting on Sunday. Milo Lewis and Tony Dixon were the most vocal, and they each issued a challenge to every member of the team. People need to go home, look at themselves in the mirror, and, and, and evaluate themselves. Um, you know, a coach can show you your mistakes, a player can tell you that we think you're doing this, doing that, but if you don't see it yourself, then obviously something is wrong. And I think um, that's where the blame should start on each individual. Milo said a couple words about uh, players making plays, too. So uh, basically it all boils down to we, got, we can't point at the coaches. We got to do our part. We got to we got to uh, make plays. Milo, he had a lot of emotion in what he was saying, and guys really uh, believed what he was saying. And so I think it's a positive effect. Uh, he's one guy on this team that uh, people look up to. He doesn't talk much, but when he does, uh, people listen. Milo had some positive things to say, and I think some, some very honest things to say, and then some of it is just uh, uh, bending sometimes, and I think that is good also. Uh, players need to have more input, need to say what's on their mind. I thought the last reason I said I thought that the uh, meeting was good, but I do see some guys trying to give that leadership. UCF is next for the Crimson Tide, and Alabama is a significant favorite against the Golden Knights. But right now, the opponent is secondary to the players. First, we got to look at ourselves. First, we got to um, look at the film and see what we done wrong, and then we got to look at Central Florida. I mean, Central Florida put a lot of points on the board, so they, they very well can beat anybody. We really need to look at ourselves and you know, see what we can do better, um, um, practice things a little better, and, um, stress the small things in practice, and 
really start to get after it. I mean, we got after it the week off, and you see what we did when we played Ole Miss. And things, um, maybe we need to stretch a little more during, during the week before um, a game. One month remains in the regular season for Alabama, and it's up to the players to determine whether or not the 2000 campaign will continue beyond November. We know it's four games, which you said it's not a lot of time, but it is also a lot of time. You know, like this week here, we can start picking it up now before we hit that three-game stretch in the SEC, which three games we have to win. If we play hard and we play up to our ability and, and uh, just go out there and have fun, and which we're supposed to do, and have a, you know play a game instead of making it a job so much. Uh, I think we just need a game that we can go out there and say that we just have fun. It, it's all in how a person uh, takes it, you know. If, if you get beat up one time, if you don't stand back up and get ready to fight again, then you're going to get beat the rest of your life. And, and that's what people got to realize. You know, hey, we'll beat Saturday. Um, I still don't think Tennessee is a better team, but they were the better team Saturday. But what are you going to do about it next Saturday? That's, that's what's important. Another sellout at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Homecoming here at the Capstone. A beautiful day, as we said, and joining us on this lovely afternoon, the third member of our broadcast crew, Chris Stewart. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It is a beautiful day in Tuscaloosa. A warm day, though, and actually the heat all across the state of Alabama has been turned up for this Alabama football program. All week long, newspapers and sports radio shows have been dominated with talk about Mike DeBose and his future, or lack thereof, as head coach at Alabama. It's been amazing how they've almost talked about the DuBose tenure in the past tense. But this is the exact same story we faced one year ago. Alabama was able to run the table. They used all that talk as motivation. They went on to reach Atlanta. They won the SEC championship and found themselves in a BCS Bowl. The Tide hoping they can duplicate that performance in 2000, but it has to start today against a very solid and a very confident UCF football team. Guys? Thanks a lot, Chris Stewart. There you see Mike Dubose on the Alabama sideline in his fourth year at his alma mater, 24 and 19, his overall record. Facing him today, Mike Kruzek, a 1976 graduate of Boston College. He's been at UCF for a long, long time, but third year as head coach and has done a very solid job with the Golden Knights. 0-9 all time against SEC teams is UCF, as we said. A beautiful day, warm for the final weekend in October. But another sellout crowd on hand today to watch the Tide and the Golden Knights. UCF deferred to the second half after winning the coin toss. Sean Toure and Arvin Richard are the deep men as Alabama will take the football to start things off. Javier Borleggi will kick it away for UCF. He drives it high and deep. Richard, three yards deep in the end zone, will bring it out. Finds a little bit of a hole right up the gut. Spilled as he crosses the 25-yard line by Comer Rucker. And Alabama with decent starting position. The offensive line for Pama, Ellington, Redmill, Hogan, Alexander, and Will Cuthbert. Ahmad Galloway, Dustin McClintock in the backfield. Carter and Collins set to start it wide out. And Sean Draper, the tight end, Andrew Zhao. Not a great performance last weekend against Tennessee. He would like to duplicate his last performance here in Tuscaloosa when he was lethal against the Ole Miss Rebels a couple of weeks ago. On first down from the 27, Alabama opens in the standard eye formation. Pitch it back to Galloway. Over the right side, Ahmad barrels forward across the 30 up near the 34-yard line. And now a look at the UCF defense. Very multiple on defense are the Knights. Elton Patterson, Josh McKibben, Jeff Malden, and Don Page across the front. Davis, Rodriguez, and Hardman, the linebackers. And in the secondary, David Bush, Travis Fisher, Damian Demps, and Rico Joseph. Good pickup on first down, almost seven yards for Ahmad Galloway. As Alabama goes with the triple stack to the near side on second and short. Zao to the air for the first time, lobs it for Millens, just off his hands and incomplete. Rico Joseph had the coverage that time, almost put that one on the money, but just out of number 15's reach. Here's Zao going back uh, and overthrows on his first pass of the day. Millens was open and could have caught it, I guess. And uh, actually, Andrew and Freddie not having the banner year that they were both expecting. 
Third down for the Crimson Tide, 38% on the year, converting third down opportunities. Back to the eye formation, receivers to either side for Zhao, who's under center. Golden Knights crowd the line, and Zhao will check off movement across the front. And penalty flags come in. Will Cuthbert may have come out of his stance prematurely. Rocky Good, our referee today. Could be if you can see that. Line. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. The call might have been uh, calling the snap for first sound. And then Andrew Zout leaned back to change the play. And then when he yelled, Cuthbert jumped. So the tide will shift into a four wide receiver set. On now third and call it eight for the Crimson Tide. Shotgun look for Zal. Screen pass, batted into the air and intercepted, I believe. Yes, it is. Heck of a play by Josh McKibben. Deflected the ball in the air and managed to haul it in before it hit the ground. Take a look. McKibben is coming from the defensive end position and uh, hits the ball up in the air. Keeps his eye on it, although he falls down, but uh, maintained enough balance to come down with the football. Big, big turnover for Alabama in the early going. Seventh interception of the season for Andrew Zhao, and the Golden Knights will have it starting at the Alabama 20. Not the way you want to start your whole homecoming game, I'll tell you right now. Ryan Schneider, the quarterback, he'll start in the shotgun. They'll go with the ground, and game, the ground game, the draw to Mack, springs it inside the 10, brought down eventually at the three-yard line by Kelf Bailey. Tied caught off guard that time as the Knights spread it out on offense. Spread it out and gave it to on the draw play, coming right up the middle, and you see a whole bunch of Alabama players missing tackles that time, finally bringing him down inside the five at the four. Uh, UCF's tailbacks aren't the big, big guys, but they're the, in the true sense of the word scat backs. Now an eye formation, first and goal officially from the four. Pitch it back to Howard, trying to get outside, he can't do it. Amari Howard, the junior from Syracuse, strung out on the play for no gain. The offense for Central Florida, Edwards, Comerford, Lorenti, Beecham, and Kurt Bauman. The offensive line, Edward Mack, Dwight Collins, Tyson Henshaw, who did start today. The backs and receivers, and Ryan Schneider, the starting quarterback, who's had quite an impressive run as of late, throwing for 300 yards in a half last week. Second and goal to the air for the first time and overthrown in the end zone looking for his tight end Mario Jackson Tony Dixon was there for the Alabama defense and here is the tied defensive unit today we'll expect to see Johnson Smith Means and Monroe across the front there is Gilbert Victor Ellis Salim Rashid the linebackers and in the secondary Milo Lewis Kelf Bailey Marcus Spencer and Tony Dixon Bailey getting the start in place of Gerald Dixon who is likely out for the season going to undergo wrist surgery Kelp just uh, was relieved and uh, he is back into the ball game again replacing uh, Miles. Third and goal from the four. Schneider to throw again into the end zone caught for the touchdown. Kenny Clark made the grab and the turnover pays dividends almost immediately for UCF. Excellent pass that time by number 17, Ryan Snyder. He hit him with a perfect strike, and there was nothing Alabama could do. All of a sudden, it's homecoming, and Alabama is down 6 to nothing in very early going. 14th touchdown pass of the year for Snyder. As Borlegi on to try the extra point. Right down the middle, and with 12.58 to play in the first quarter, UCF leads it 7 to nothing. There's the throw from Snyder. As you said, uh, David, that's his 14th touchdown pass of the year. He needs a couple of more, 16, to tie Vic Penn, who's the guy whose place he took, who's sitting on the sideline. Second catch, touchdown catch, that is, of the season for Clark, and Central Florida leads it 7 to nothing over the Crimson Tide at homecoming in Tuscaloosa. Not the start Bama was looking for. Turnovers have been a problem. That is the 15th 
giveaway by the Alabama offense, and the opponents have now turned those turnovers into 42 points. Not good. Also, in the very first series again, the Alabama offensive line committed the boo-boo of movement prior to the snap. A look at the scoring drive for Central Florida. Not all that long after the turnover. Four plays, 20 yards, just over a minute off the clock. And Mike Kruzak has to be ecstatic. Exactly what he would like to see. His team jump out ahead early and That's only try and take that. a little emotion out of this crowd. But that's what we were talking about earlier. Alabama cannot allow UCF to continue to think they can upset Alabama. But if they continue this, UCF, UCF will uh, be having a field day. We said Golden Knights have never beaten a Southeastern Conference team 0-9, but have played a bunch of those teams to the wire. Borlegi boots it away at the goal line. Richard brings it out. Across the 15, spun down at the 18-yard line by Chris Polinko. Another good kickoff by Javier Borleggi, who is a dynamite kicker for UCF. Ivan brought it out on the first kickoff from deep in the end zone and managed to get it up back past the 27, but this time at the goal line, UCF kick coverage was such that he did not get back to the 20. goes with four wide receivers on first and ten. The inside handoff to Galloway right up the gut and Ahmad powers forward very close to a first down. Rashad Smith on the tackle a gain of very nearly ten yards. This is something Alabama must do to control this football game and that is run the football successfully as they did that time with Ahmad Galloway. He's the starting tailback today, and he took that one through heavy traffic for a gain of nine. Galloway has the only 100-yard rushing performance of the season by an Alabama back. 172 against Vanderbilt. Second and short, they'll give it to him on again. He'll have the first down as he's wrapped up, crossing the 30-yard line, brought down at the 31. Bolton Patterson made the tackle for Central Florida. First down, Alabama. Zao and the offense, critical of themselves last week after the loss to Tennessee, saying they came out very emotionless, which is surprising after the performance they had against Ole Miss the week before. Very surprising, and I think the coaches were rather stunned by what did transpire. Carter drifts into motion, play action for Zao. Let's it go deep down the field and overthrown, looking for Sam Collins. David Bush, stride for stride with Bama's number seven. McKibben, again, you can take a look here. Just as Zao released the ball, McKibben leveled him, hit him a shot right in the middle of his back, and uh, chopped him rather harshly. But again, the two passes that Zao has thrown have been overthrown. Football at the Alabama 31. Second down and 10 for the Crimson Tide. Pitch it back to Galloway. A yard, maybe two on the play as Don Page there to get the first hit on, in on Ahmad Galloway. This UCF front wall, uh, David, is not uh, defensively. They are not too big as defensive linemen go, but they are extremely quick and they do a lot of stunning. And uh, they also put, just put in their nickel defense because they're expecting Zhao to go to the air again. Mike Kruzek spent 13 years as the offensive coordinator at UCF before getting the head job. It's third down, spread formation for the Tide. Zhao all day to throw, finds Arvin Richard coming out of the backfield. He is dropped from behind at the 44-yard line by Elliott Shorter, but that is more than enough for the first down, a pickup of 12 on the play. Zal this time getting excellent protection by the Alabama offensive line. He had all day to throw and rifled the ball to Arvin Richards, almost overthrew him, but he caught it. First down, Bama. Seen a lot more of Arvin Richards as of late in the Alabama backfield, and he's done a nice job. 
for the Tigers. Now rolls and throws to Collins, who can't haul it in over on the Alabama sideline. Travis Fisher right behind him to make the hit. You can take a look. Zhao under the center. This time takes the ball from Hogan and then sprints to his right. Uh, that allows him more time, and uh, he really rifled it over, but I'm sure Collins thinks he should have caught that ball. Andrew just one of his first five with an interception to start this ball game. Four wide outs on second and ten. For the tie. Back to the ground. Galloway gets the handoff from Mod. Bulls his way across midfield. Brought down inside Golden Knight territory. Tito Rodriguez, Jake McKibben, brother of Josh, who had the interception not too long ago. This is a scary game for Alabama, as we mentioned in the pregame, Doug. A heavy favorite, almost three touchdown favorite for the Tide, but I didn't think, don't know of many people who thought Alabama would win the game by that large a margin. No, and uh, they don't have the hands full today. UCF is not that uh, bad a football team. On the rollout, Val looking for Millens, but well wide of Freddie. And it'll be fourth down and punting time for Bama. You can take a look. Zhao is again sprinting to his right, and again he overthrows the, his intended receiver. He didn't give Millens a chance at all to catch the football. And so it'll bring up fourth down, and Bama must turn it back over to UCF. Ashante Samuel. The deep man is Lane Bearden gets set to punt it for the Crimson Tide. Bearden having a great year, averaging better than 41 yards a kick. It's a boomer this time. Samuel calls for fair catch, but we'll watch this one bound into the end zone. For the touchback, a 50-yard punt for Bearden, who had a career-long 62-yarder last week in the loss to Tennessee. 9.38 to play in the first quarter at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. UCF leads it 7 to nothing over Alabama. Golden Knights offense about to take the field again. We said Mike Kruzek, the head coach, 13 years as the offensive coordinator. He's got a couple of Super Bowl rings in his jewelry box at home. He sure has. He'd like to have a W here today. That would be even bigger than the Super Bowl ring probably. Play action, completes the pass on the far side to Henshaw, who moves it out to the 25-yard line. I'll Brock. tell you, excuse me, David, but I'll tell you right there, you saw what Albert means is going to mean one day to Alabama. Watch him recover and go after the receiver and drop him for what could have been a big gain into a lesser gain. Henshaw, number two in America in receptions per game. He's averaging eight catches per ball game. Second down, inside handoff to Mack. Tripped up as he nears the 30-yard line. I think he'll be just shy of the first down. Tony Dixon, Salim Rashid there to trip him up before he could get the first down marker. As I mentioned earlier, these, uh, these uh, tailbacks for UCL are sort of scat back. Mack is only about 5'8" or nine, and that may be generous, and he weighs about 185 pounds and uh, can really move the football. They are very, very fast, very quick. Third and inches. Schneider under center. He'll try the quarterback sneak, and he will have the first down. Schneider, on the other hand, David, is not all that small, about 6'2 or so, plus uh, 215, somewhere in that area. He's got a very, very strong arm. He's, uh, he's a young one. Vic Penn was the starting quarterback all of last year and was at the start of this year, but sustained a shoulder injury, and Snyder came in in relief, and now you can't get him out. Fresh set of downs for the Golden Knights. Back the single setback. Bobbled and dropped by Henshaw. Looked like that was sitting on his shoulder pad for a couple of seconds. He couldn't haul it in. 
He sure couldn't. Reaction quickly by Milo Lewis right there. And uh, I think he'd maybe been staring at Milo just a wee bit, too, before he uh, before the ball got to him. But at any rate, incomplete. Clock stopped with 7.52. 7-0, the Golden Knights with the early lead. Second down and 10 for UCF. Back to the shotgun goes Ryan Schneider. Play action. All day to throw. Loads up, goes deep, incomplete. Closest man to that was Reggie Miles for the Crimson Tide. Quickly, we go down to the sideline and Chris Stewart. David, I don't think there's any question Alabama's the more talented football team. However, I think the biggest key in this game may be confidence. Alabama lacking in confidence after a loss at Tennessee a week ago. Central Florida coming in probably with more confidence than they've had all season long after a 55 to nothing shutout just one week ago. And certainly the longer the Golden Knights can go either tied or with their current 7 nothing advantage, you know their confidence will continue to grow in this ballgame. Big third down for the Alabama defense. Schneider pressured, lets it go. Catch is made on the near side by Tavares Davis. But he will be short of the first down as Milo Lewis was there to trip him up. As he came down, Victor Ellis finally got some pressure on Schneider and the Golden Knights will have to punt. Milo was making a break for the football on that pass but slipped down but he managed to continue crawling and bring the receiver down for no gain or at least very small gain that'll be fourth down for leggy also the punter for ucf wobbly kick freddie millinger's charges but will let it roll and it takes a great roll for the golden knights touchdown at the 14 yard line freddie was charging for all he was worth but he couldn't get there before it bounced by him and cost the tide about 15 yards in field position a 49 yard punch by Borlegi. now the alabama offense really not able to get anything going so far in the ball game david must settle down and take control of the line of scrimmage and get this football into the end zone and get a mile or two back on the faces of these homecoming fans Alabama 67, 11, and 1 in homecoming games. Fans will remember, not very fondly, just a couple of years ago, 1997 dropping the homecoming game to Louisiana Tech. Zal picked off again. Elliott Shorter stepped in front of Antonio Carter, the second turnover of the ball game, and the Knights will take over almost exactly the same spot they had it the first time. Zao that time threw it right into Shorter's hands. You can take a look. It's coming out of the shotgun again, he moves to his right and then plants and throws. And Shorter steps right in front of the intended receiver and takes it back to the 20. Second INT by Zao, and that play shades of the Louisiana Tech game from That's, three years ago. Absolutely. And now here are the Knights inside the 20 once again on a gift from Alabama. Setting up shop at the Alabama 19. Baker trying to pop it outside. Picks up a couple before he's ridden out of bounds. Corey Baker into the game, replacing Edward Mack in the backfield. Redshirt freshman from Sethner, Florida. Baker and uh, Mack are about the same size. And uh, they're not going to bowl over anybody, but uh, they make it very difficult for you to get a hand on them to bring them down. Only averaging as a team about 89 yards rushing the game. The running backs mainly for show, I think, in this offense. <laughs> Second down. Baker cuts it back. Will take it to the 15. A gain of one wrapped up by Aries Monroe there. And it will bring up a third and about six. Ellis Johnson saw his defense play very well against the Volunteers last week for the most part, allowing the Big Orange just 96 yards rushing third straight opponent Alabama has held under 100 yards on the ground. The defense was very good last week. Matt 
back into the game, standing alongside Schneider in the shotgun. Pressure comes from Bama. Pass is caught over the middle, and it will all depend on the spot. Jimmy Frizzell says first down, and he will be very close depending on the forward progress. Marcus Spencer with the tackle. We'll see if he saved a first down. Now, no first down. Now, they're sending in the officials say it's fourth down and lacks about a half a yard or so, so the kicking units come in. Ostensibly the kick. Golden Knights, at least appearing not to be greedy, will settle for the field goal try by Berlegi. 10 out of 14 on the year. A long of 48. 26-yard try on the way. And good. So two Alabama turnovers in the red zone lead to 10 UCF points. And with 5.14 to play in the first quarter, it's 10-0 Golden Knights. Late October means basketball is just around the corner, Doug Layton, if you got your season tickets yet. Well, of course. I'm all set and ready to go, but in case I didn't have it, I know where to go. Call the Alabama ticket office for information or order them directly from South Ticks at 1-800-240-2300. Men's and women's season tickets for sale. Saw Mark Gottfried on the quad last night at the bonfire. He had his entire clan in tow, and I think he has a perpetual smile on his face. He's very excited about this team. Oh, the, I think so, too. This may be... Uh, the, 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 the Alabama fans are probably as expectant about this basketball group than they have been in years. And uh, a lot of it to do with the, uh, all of it really, for the recruiting job that Mark and his staff have done. 10-0 our score, 5-14 to play in the first quarter. Andrews now a tough start. One completion, two interceptions, but a chance to redeem himself momentarily as Alabama will get the football back. Borlegi to kick off yet again. Sean Toure and Arvin Richard back deep, but this time they switch sides. Ray, one of the fastest men on this Alabama team. There's Arvin Richard to the near side and Sean Tu to the far side. Borlegi kicks it to Ray. He fields it at the three. There you see some of that speed as he races out to the 27-yard line brought down by Kamar Rucker. Now that's the way you're supposed to run a kick back. I mean, Sean Tua did not hesitate, did not look around. He just takes the kick off and starts right up the gap where his blocking is set up. He does not slow down. He doesn't look around. He just runs. And get it back in pretty good field position for Alabama, but Andrew Zau has got to have his confidence shaken just a little bit in this ball game so far. He needs something good to happen. The give to Brandon Myrie, who checks into the game for his first action. Across the 30, tackled at the 32 by Josh McKibben. And Damian Dimps also there to lend a hand. Myrie had a great run against Tennessee last week late in the game trying to help bring Alabama back on the next play he turned it over deep in ball territory and that really seemed to be the final nail in Alabama's coffin well no one was more sad than uh, was number 42 in the locker room after the game he was crying and uh, it's not the end of the world he's going to be a great one pulls his way across the 35 and should have another first down Dimps the unpleasant task of trying to bring Brandon Myrie to the ground, which is not an easy task. Take a look. Here's the toss back to Brandon Myrie, number 42. Got the ball in the proper arm, turns it upfield, and he is a load. He weighs 200, close to 230 pounds, and he can move as well. First down for Bama. This is what Alabama needs to do now. Run the ball successfully, and then the passing lanes will open up for Andrew. Shotgun. Flushed out, Andrew looking for Myrie. Can't haul that one in. McKibben got some pressure on Andrew and made him hurry that throw just a little bit. Tide trying to incorporate the running backs 
into the passing game a little bit more as of late. That's right, and that was one of the things that Coach uh, Ivy Williams said it, uh, that Brandon needs to work on is uh, improve his hands a bit, and he'd see more playing time. But uh, on that one, I don't think he could have caught that one at all. Second down, football almost touching the 38-yard line. Staying with the four wide receiver set, but the draw to Myrie right up the gut. Brandon Myrie spilled at the UCF 42 by Dimp. He's got power. He showed some speed on that run. You can take a look at number 33, who got in his way right there. Finally, he's knocked down by Dimp. But, buddy, he is something, and, a good, and just a great guy. I'm glad he's off to a good start today because he needs to forget about last Saturday. All the Alabama fans will remember it for you, Brandon. You forget <laughs> about it and go on. 20 yards on that gallop by Myrie, and you're right. He was absolutely devastated in the locker room after the fumble late in the game to the Volunteers. He gets the carry yet again. Tito Rodriguez, the tackle, but another good pickup on first down, five yards for Myrie. Plot continues to wind here late in the first quarter and a 10-0 Golden Knights lead. Kruzek, as we mentioned, two Super Bowl rings, both as a backup quarterback with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you would think he knows a little bit about defense as well. Myrie, the call again over the right side. Still on his feet. Myrie to the end zone. He will score. Touchdown, Alabama. Great run by Brandon Myrie that time. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. Cuthbert knocked a big hole for him, and then once he gets up ahead of steam, an arm will not bring him down. Sixth rushing touchdown of the year. 37 yards out, almost untouched. Cuthbert actually blocked two guys on that play, you can see, and then once Myrie got it into the open, no one is going to catch you. So Alabama finally starts to some, get something going here offensively. Neil Thomas to try the extra point. Bangs it through. And a lot happier young man right now, Brandon Myrie, after this jaunt to the end zone. 37 yards. Most of that drive, thanks to... Brandon Myrie. That's right. You know, he almost had one against Tennessee last week, but uh, one guy just sort of shoestring tackled him and uh, stopped him on that one. 10 7 our score now. Back down to the field. And Chris Stewart. David, you can see the purpose in the way Brandon Myrie was running the football. From the first time he was handed the pigskin, he just ran with great determination. Not surprised really to see him finish a drive with a great run like that. He, you could tell he was really trying to redeem himself, as you both mentioned, from that play at the end of the Tennessee game a week ago with about eight minutes to play. Thanks, Chris. Tied on the board now, 248 to play here in Tuscaloosa. Other games around America. It was 14-0 Nebraska about midway through the first quarter. Apparently just ticked the Sooners off. I guess because Oklahoma comes back and they, that's a big win for Bob Stoops and his program. We'll, Look at that. We'll update that score. It's 14-10 now South Carolina midway through the fourth. We'll update that one for you as well. 14-14, Auburn and Arkansas score uh, tied. Well, that's a misprint there. Georgia and Florida, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in Jacksonville, just underway. Busy day, a big day around college football. A lot of important ball games as we approach the final month of the season. Thomas boots it away. Ashante Samuel will bring it out across the 20. He is at the 25-yard line. Reggie Miles is the guy that wrapped him up. Here he comes. And there's Sean to Ray. He's down there first, but here's Miles coming into the scene. That was a fumble on that play. Dripped it, and Jimmy Johnson fell on it for the Golden Knights. You heard the crowd roar a little bit. That was because the ball was on the carpet momentarily. So spot it at the 19 for UCF. And Schneider will load up the shotgun on first and 10. 
The shuffle pass to Mack. Good for about Ryan five yards. Kelvis White, made Kelvis White with the tackle for the tie. The senior from Cortland. There he is. Alabama better be prepared because UCF loves to send their their wideouts on reverses. They love to pass out of those reverses. They love halfback passes as well. Single setback is Matt. He gets the handoff and will go nowhere. On second and five, brought down again by Kelvis White right at the line of scrimmage. Take a look at Kelvis White coming across, and there he is. He's taking three of four UCF guys with him, but he drops him for practically no gain on the play and this uh, Alabama squad all of a sudden seems to be playing with a little more determination a little more them and vigor you might say third down for the Golden Knights officially they need four yards to keep the drive going Pinshaw the motion man Schneider goes deep looking for Henshaw who can't make the catch Good coverage that time by Adam Cox, the linebacker, dropping into coverage for the Tide. He was step for step with Henshaw. Take a look. This is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to get Henshaw on a, with the linebacker, and Adam Cox, a youngster from Jasper, was with him step for step. He never looked back, but he didn't touch him until the ball got there, so all is well that ends well, as Billy once said. So the defense comes through with a stop, and Freddie Millens awaits. The punt of Javier Borlegi. Another wobbly kick off the side of his foot that will take a great roll. But Millens will field it at the 35. Wrapped up and brought down at the 43 yard line. Freddie able to field that one on a hop before it squirted by him. 40 yard punt by Borlegi and a return of nine yards. For just a moment there, you could see the Freddie Millens of old. He was really putting some juking on and almost broke it for quite a bit more, but that's something I haven't seen him do this year as yet. But uh, it's there. You can tell the talent is there. And why he hasn't been doing it, no one knows. 56 seconds to play in the opening period. Brandon Myrie, no surprise. In the Alabama backfield. Tries the right side. Not much running room for Myrie. Elton Patterson there to clog things up for UCF. Golden Knights coming off a route of Louisiana Monroe. Boy, Louisiana Monroe is taking some lickings this year. The Vols put 70 on them. A couple of weeks ago, and the Golden Knights shut them out 55 to nothing. Steve Sloan has done a good job at, uh, at this Orlando school with scheduling. Second down. The rollout for Zao and the throwback to Draper on the tight end screen. Draper, if he can keep his feet, he may score. Draper to the five. Touchdown! The tight end screen worked to perfection. However, I thought for a moment that Draper might get a flag for delay of game. <laughs> you Only do not he... want to get in front of this man and try oh. and bring him down. Great play by Zhao. He's the guy that set it up beautifully. And look at the guys out in front of him. There's Hogan. And then Draper turns up field. Another great block down there. And now Draper is just legging it downfield and uh, also in there throwing a block for him was uh, Dre Fulton for the freshman Franklin. Thomas for the point after. It's good. 56 yards for Sean Draper. His third reception of the year. It's a touchdown and it gives Alabama a 14 to 10 lead. Chris Stewart, what do you have? 
Guys, we've got the reading on the uh, seismograph after that run by Draper. I think it was a 6.5. You know, that's the play that was put in last year for Terry Jones Jr. And I think Central Florida, maybe other teams have sort of forgotten about that play since Terry is out of the lineup with that season-ending knee injury. But Sean Draper showing that when he gets ahead of steam, he can rumble for some big yardage as well. For those of you who are not aware, Draper weighs about 295 pounds. He's been a tight end, a defensive lineman, a tight end, a tackle, a tight end. He's covered a lot of positions on the Alabama depth chart, but once that hash mark didn't get him, Doug, he was gone. That's right. And uh, I guess it was game before last when he made his career first catch. Two catches against Ole Miss. He never got really squared, his feet under him that time, but he did on that play. And yes, sir. Look out. So he said 80th homecoming game for the Tide and fared pretty well. Edward Mack, the deep man. One of the deep men. Jimmy Johnson also back there for the Golden Knights. And Neil Thomas will kick it off again for Alabama. 24 points in the first quarter alone here today. And only two ticks on the clock here in the first period. Thomas puts his foot into it, drives it eight yards deep in the end zone. And Mack wisely will take a knee. Great kickoff by Neil Thomas. He took over that role for Alabama last week in Knoxville. That's right, and does uh, and is doing a super job. Into the first quarter in Tuscaloosa. Alabama trailed it 10 to nothing early on, but now leads it 14 to 10 as we head to the second. A seventh grader at a small underfunded school Learn science via satellite. A new graduate finds a friend in an unfamiliar place. A rural mother is thankful for long-needed medical help. A freshman learns that her teacher is also her friend. The University of Alabama. Touching lives and making a difference. Around the world and right next door. Still out crowd at Brian Denny. And after a sluggish start by the Alabama offense, 14 to 10 as we get ready for the second quarter. David Crane along with Doug Lake, Chris Stewart on the sidelines for us here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. You know, all the uh, all the talk and uh, all the printing that has been swirling around this program for the past couple of three weeks, as a matter of fact, since the UCLA game. Uh, when you mentioned this is a sellout here tonight, it just points out uh, the faithfulness of this Alabama, the Alabama fan. And here we are with a full house here tonight, uh, this afternoon. Schneider, so far today, five out of nine with the touchdown pass, following an Alabama turnover. Start this possession at their own 20, over the middle and incomplete. I think he was actually looking for Tavares Davis, but Tyson Henshaw wound up being the closest man to that ball that was overthrown. Dixon couldn't have played it any better, you know it. He got stride for stride with the intended receiver, it then just got in his way. Second down and ten for Mike Kruzek's offense. Averaging about 31 points a game this year with a record of five and three. Schneider all day to throw again. That one high and picked off. Tony Dixon playing center field, makes the grab, brings it back to the 29. Looking for Henshaw again, but that one may have sailed on Schneider a little bit. And Tony Dixon there for his second interception of the season. Good pressure you could see there being applied by Alabama's uh, Naughton McKay-Losher. 
almost got to him, but he certainly made him throw the pass a little awry, overthrown, and when you throw it over somebody deep, usually you got the free safety there waiting on it, and that was what happened that time at Alabama with the first turnover of the ball game. Third interception of the game. We're not even a minute into the second quarter. Myrie, the handoff. Trying to pop it outside. He'll gain three on first down. Josh McKibben. Jeff Malden also in the area that time for UCF. Andrew Zow's numbers. Not great, but the running game has kicked in. And the tide leads 14 to 10. Handoff to Millens trying to turn the corner. Golden Knights were ready for that. Freddie will tiptoe out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. Tito Rodriguez, a good job of staying at home that time. And sending Millens around the wide side, they could not set the blocking up and wall off the left side of the UCF defensive line. And as a consequence, there was hardly any game uh, on the play, if any at all. A loss of one officially will bring up third and eight. Tied one of three on third down so far today. From the shotgun, Val, the quick throw to Carter. Wrestled down from behind as he reaches the 23-yard line. That will be almost four yards shy of the mark. Willie Davis on the stop, and Alabama will have to settle for a field goal try. That was another play that UCL up, uh, UCF was waiting on, and... Uh, Stopped it for practically no gain once they saw it open up, and so Alabama will kick it again. Neil Thomas out of the hold of Jonathan Ritchie will try a 40-yarder. Eight out of ten on the year. He has been dynamite for Bama, and he does it again. Nine out of 11 on the year, and Alabama capitalizes on the turnover, converts it into three points, and now leads the Golden Knights by a touchdown. 13-19 to play in the first half. It's 17-10, Alabama. We gave you the numbers for Alabama's opponents this year, converting turnovers into points. Alabama not as effective. That's the 13th takeaway by the Alabama defense, the offense has only managed 20 points now off those turnovers. That's something that Coach uh, DuBose has talked about all year long that need to be uh, improved. And uh, obviously against uh, Central Florida, they're doing a pretty good job. Tied really dominating statistically the points UCF well, has gifts. gotten were gifts taking over inside the 20 both times. Travis Fisher now goes back deep as the Golden Knights continue to shuffle things in their return game. Thomas kicking into a slight breeze here. Bangs it again. Four yards deep, Fisher will take a knee. A big problem for Alabama all year has been kickoffs, but it looks like Neil Thomas is the answer man for that as well. That's right. Contrary to what the, to, uh, contrary to what the television ad says, you spell relief, T-H-O-M-A-S. Crowd fans love to see the ball, and as do coaches, sail into the end zone, eliminate any kind of return. Ryan Schneider leads the Golden Knights offense back out. Starting from their own 20. Hand off to Mack. Over the right side. Lost the football. Alabama picks it up. Milo Lewis takes 
takes it in for the touchdown. Two-yard return after the fumble by Edward Mack. You can see Alabama, the ball is knocked loose right there, and it, now Helmut knocks it even further, and scooping it up is Milo Lewis, and he goes untouched into the end zone. And we were talking earlier about, uh, and UCF has a player injured on the field. Uh, Alabama couldn't turn the ball over to a UCL, UCF squad, but conversely, Central Florida just can't afford to give Alabama anything at all because Alabama is a very talented team. Two turnovers each way, and all four have led to points. Victor Ellis may have been the man that jarred the ball loose. A bunch of red helmets in there. And a heads-up play by Milo Lewis. It Scooped sure was. it up on the run. Twelfth time under Mike Dubos that Alabama has recorded either a defensive or special teams score. I think it might have been Means that uh, knocked the ball loose, stripped the ball loose. Number 91 was right in there. And we've still got an injured player on the field. And it is Edward Mack, the tailback. I believe so. Checking on Mack. He's still down on the field. 13-04, 23-10, Bama, extra point. Upcoming. Don't forget, each and every Monday night, live from the Wing Sports Grill here in Tuscaloosa. Hey, Coach, on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Eli Gold, your host, Mike Dubos, and all the other Alabama head coaches will make appearances throughout the season. 7 to 8.30 Monday nights on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, live from Wings here in Tuscaloosa. Mack on his feet now and walking very slowly back to the UCF sideline. We send it down to Chris Stewart. Intensity has changed so much in this football game, almost since the first carry by Brandon Myrie. But after Myrie scored the long touchdown run, the defense sort of fed off that intensity, and they have really helped turn this ball game around for Alabama. Each team with 10 points off turnovers. It's not the prettiest game we've ever seen early on. No, but that's true, but uh, I'll bet you Coach Dubose will take it right now. 23 to 10, Thomas for the point after. Splits the uprights. And with 13.04 to play in the first half, it's now a 24 to 10 Alabama lead over the Golden Knights. I think Mack just had his bell rung a little bit. And uh, you can see him working on him there on the sideline. He's their starting tailback. And how things can change in a hurry. Mike Kruzek, a little more skipping his step. Not too long ago, his team led this game 10 to nothing very early. That's correct. And now Alabama's come storming back with 24 unanswered points. And uh, the coach now seems to have a furrowed brow. Ryan Denny Stadium, there you see it. Colorful, beautiful, packed. Homecoming 2000. Almost 84,000 here at Bryant Denny. Bama's last home game for a couple of weeks. The regular season finale will be here at Bryant Denny. And Doug, that should be somewhat interesting. Well, it'll uh, certainly be historic. It's the first time ever, not in Tuscaloosa for Auburn, Alabama, but at Bryant Denny. It is. The Tigers making their first appearance at Bryant Denny Stadium, November 18th. But a whole lot of football to be played before then. And right now, Alabama and Auburn, Mississippi State, all tied for and LSU. It's statistically State, ahead. State a half game out of two and two. LSU, Alabama, and Auburn all three and two on the year. Shante Samuel takes it in at the four. Puts on a nice move and gets down the sidelines. If he keeps his feet, that could have been big, big problems for Alabama. It's still a nice return 
for the Golden Knights. Cornelius Wortham, the special teams tackle, but pretty good starting position for UCF at their own 33. They have really, outside of the first possession of the game for them, the short field to work with, their offense has done very, very little. Alabama's defense has really stiffened, and it might have been with the uh, with the heads up and hard running of Brandon Myrie that uh, got them fired up on all, but something has galvanized the team, and they're really playing inspired football right now. Corey Baker checks in at the tailback spot. As they still work on Matt on the sideline. Quick throw to Davis on the near side. He is dropped at the 35-yard line by Marcus Spencer, a gain of a yard, maybe two at the very most. Quick throw, two-step drop, and Snyder gets rid of it in a hurry, but look at Marcus Spencer. is giving him really short shrift on that play and dropped him for practically no gain on the play. Give him a yard and a half at, uh, at best. And Marcus Davis to the Alabama sideline. Second down. Call it eight for the Golden Knights. As Schneider works from the shotgun. He brings Henshaw into motion. With time, loads up. Batted away, broken up by Reggie Miles. Reggie, at the very last moment, reached in with the right hand and slaps the ball away, and he's all upset with himself because he felt he should have intercepted the ball. That ball a little behind Jimmy Frizzell didn't lead him very well, and that gave Miles the chance to step in and break the pass up. 12.06 to play in the first half. Shotgun for Schneider on third and long. All day to throw. Nice catch by Frizzell into Alabama territory. Brought down at the 43 by Kelf Bailey. But a nice stretch by Jimmy Frizzell, the sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. Picks up 23 yards on the play. You can take a look. Snyder getting good protection there. Steps up into the pocket. And then a great catch that time by Central Florida's Jimmy Frizzell. 5'11", 175 pounder. And he was being covered by Kelf Bailey on the play. 4-4 speed for Frizzell in the 40. So good hands and good wheels to go with it. The inside handoff to Baker. Tiptoeing through the line, Jared Johnson with the tackle for Bama as Baker takes it just inside the 40. After the completed pass to Frizzell, UCF comes right back with a draw, hoping to catch Alabama in a, in a blitz but uh, they covered it very well, but he did manage to pick up four on the play. That was Johnson. Has seen his defense progress this year, allowing just under 300 yards a game. Snyder to the air on second down. Henshaw had to stretch for that one. Couldn't reel it in. Carlos Andrews. Backing up Kelf Bailey now with Dixon out on the coverage that time. Number 17 is back, Snyder. There he throws it. Henshaw was there, but just a little out, uh, a little too far. He got yeah. that hurt shoulder. Got to think that would loosen the shoulder up a little bit. And uh, might have had some effect on uh, him going after that one with a little more abandon. Henshaw had six catches for 136 yards and two touchdowns against... Louisiana Monroe last weekend. Another third down for the Golden Knights. Bama shows blitz. Here they come. Trying to set up the screen, and Bama read it well. Adam Cox got in there to disrupt the play as Amari Howard was the intended receiver. Excellent call on, uh, as far as what Alabama had called defensively, the blitz. And uh, you had Adam Cox who got in there and blew that one apart. And Howard didn't have a chance. It'll be fourth down and about six now for the first down. And let's see what they're going to do. Are they going to pooch it or will he kick? I noticed in the pregame uh, they could not kick a 50-yard field goal. He just way short every time when they were warming up. So he's going to punish. Freddie Millen's back deep. 
as Borleggi will try and pin the tide deep in its own territory. But the officials blow the play dead. And perhaps a delay of game penalty or a timeout. Let's see. I think it's delay of game. Delay of game, game against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Buying more leggy an extra five yards of real estate to work with. Millen still stands at his own 10. Well, Leggy is making Millen really work when he tries to return some of these kicks because he's been kicking away from him thus far. Low snap handled by Borleggi. Tumbling punt that Millens will fair catch at the 15. 30-yard kick by Borleggi. No return by Millens. And the Alabama offense will go back to work. 10-41 to play in the half and a 24-10 Alabama lead. You would like to see Andrew Zhao turn it around like the rest of the offense has here today. Yes, his passes have been just a wee off, and I'm sure Andrew is aware of that. Toss sweep to Myrie. Golden Knights played that one pretty well. Tripped up after a short pickup. Fred Harley got him to the ground after a gain of three. And you know Alabama is going to need Andrew Zhao to be at his best for the stretch run. Alabama heads to Baton Rouge next weekend, then goes to Starkville, and will finish the season at home against Auburn. And that is a... Tough, tough stretch, as it always is, for the Tide late in the season. Yes, Alabama needs uh, Andrew Zhao to be as sharp as he can possibly be. Millen makes the catch underneath, stays on his feet, and will have a first down. Slipped a couple of would-be tackles and takes it out to the 26-yard line. Good protection for Andrew Zhao on a quick drop and got it to Millen's, and Millen's is awfully hard to corral and finally is brought down from behind on the play by uh, Palomini, I guess. 17 straight games with at least one catch for Freddie Millens. He didn't play against Ole Miss a couple of weeks ago, but he's caught at least one ball in 17 straight that he's played in, and Andrew Zhao didn't like what he saw from the UCF defense or maybe not what he saw from his offense and takes a timeout. Sometimes uh, when the quarterback comes up out of the huddle, takes a look at what the defense is presenting to him, he might want to change the play. He had plenty of time to do that, but he might not have the people in the game that would allow him to change the play that he wants to change it to. So he had to call a timeout. 9.32 to play in the first half. Tide fans a little happier now. Alabama leads it 24 to 10 over the Golden Knights. Log on to RollTide.com, the official athletic website of the University of Alabama. News, stats, scores from every Tide team. A link to the Crimson Tide Sports Network broadcast, and you can follow selected Alabama sporting events live all at RollTide.com. Chris Stewart, what do you have for us down on the sidelines? Well, David, Alabama certainly helped Central Florida with this stat, but they have kept a streak going since they moved to Division I status with their football program, now 45 straight games. Golden Knights have never been shut out. You've got to go back to 1984 when they lost to the Sycamores of Indiana State to find the last time that a Golden Knights team failed to put points on the board. First down for Bama after the timeout. Myrie, the ball carrier, runs for a couple. Willie Davis brings him down. Davis, not a bad outing against Louisiana Monroe. 11 tackles in the game. Had a medical redshirt year last year with a torn triceps. And that sounds painful. It sure does. 
A guy that we haven't called uh, his name much today is uh, Elton Patterson, who's one of the top sackers in college football today, but uh, he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't factored into this game at all. Five wide receivers. Zal rifles the pass complete to Antonio Carter. Took a pop again, did Zal, as he let go of that one. Middle linebacker. Tito Rodriguez, you can see him, he's the guy that uh, gets to Zao here, uh, right there, hammers him just as he released the ball. Andrew, a tough young man, he got popped several times last week in Knoxville. Sure did. And uh, Andrew knows that, that he's it. He's got to carry the load. Third down, a short two for Alabama. The give to Myrie, hit in the backfield, keeps the legs driving forward, and I think that last little spin move may have earned him the first down. I think you're right. You can see Brandon Myrie looks like he's going to be stopped almost the minute he gets the football right there, but he spun away from the guy we're just talking about, Elton Patterson, and then gets into uh, linebacker territory to pick up the first down. Great running by number 42 the red shirt freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Not a bad first half. Heck, that's pretty Oof. good game numbers for the Alabama running back so far this year, approaching 100 yards on the ground in the first half. Arvin Richard will check into the game for Myrie. Andrew looking, looking, under pressure. The jump pass to Richard, and Arvin can't bring it in. Great, great coverage downfield by UCI. They were really on every receiver. I think they're trying to set up a screen to the left side. He looks over there, and it's not there. Now he's looking. He wants to get rid of it, and he does. Tries the old over-the-top pass to Arvin Richards, and it was uh, incomplete. And buddy Sam Collins really got hammered in the secondary that time. Jeff Malden, another shot on Zal. Second and ten, another five wide receiver set underneath the grab by McCadley. Break the tackle. Forward inside Golden Knights territory before Malden gets into the turf. Another first down. You can take a look. Straight back drop by Zhao. And you got uh, McCadley on a linebacker, and that's what you want. And McCadley picks up the first down, and Alabama is rolling again here in the late stages of the first half. McCadley, a touchdown grab last week. The only two touchdown passes of the season for Alabama quarterbacks. Both of them have gone to Jason McCadley. Myrie back in there as a blocking back. As now goes deep for Carter. He can't make the catch. And now I think a very late flag is going to come in. The line judge sprinted some 30 yards down the field to drop his flag. The field judge was right there beside the play. And as you might imagine, the UCF sideline not real thrilled to see that flag come in. Rocky Good, the referee right there, is probably saying, now run that back Pass again. Interference against the defense. It'll be 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. All right, here we go. That's Zhao, number five, with the ball. He's looking downfield for A.C. And sort of a wobbly pass, and uh, couldn't tell that time. Hey, here we go. Now we can see. And maybe he did push him a little bit. He could have very easily called that uh, incidental contact as well, but he didn't, so it's pass interference. We will say this. Talking with John Marini, the UCF Sports Information Director, before the game. The inside handoff as a flag comes in. John said that UCF uses SEC officials for their home game. So I said, I guess you're used to this then. <laughs> you're used to this nonsense. Here's the call from Rocky. Holding on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul and should remain first down. I think uh, the call was on uh, Ephraim that time. At least it looked like the official said 58 to Coach Dubos. 
But at any rate, it's uh, holding, and that uh, will put them back 15 yards almost. Alonzo in there, right guard, giving Dennis Alexander a breather for the moment. Step off, takes it back to the 44. All day to throw. Complete to the far side, Antonio Carter on the grab. At the 35-yard line, just about got the holding penalty back for Alabama with that completion. I wish you could see the receivers over there. Three of them going out together, and then they scatter like a covey of quail. And then he threw it to the underneath guy, A.C., and uh, picked up a few yards on the play. Almost got the penalty back, but not quite. Clock rolling as we near the six-minute mark in the first half. 24 to 10, our score. Alabama, again, if you're just joining us, trailed 10 to nothing early in the first quarter. Shades of Oklahoma and Nebraska from earlier today. Now with time again, Kent hook up with Antonio Carter as he took a good pop from Damian Demps that time. Well, the offensive line really did a good job for Zao that time. He had all day to throw the ball, and he's got Carter down there wide open, but throws it way behind him. Carter had no chance to catch that football. So it'll bring up third down and 11. AC averaging 100, almost 102 yards receiving a game in his last three outings. He has really stepped it up for Alabama. Andrews' numbers slowly beginning to climb a little bit after a rocky, rocky start. Third and 11 for Bama. Passing down again. Incomplete. That one off the hands of Jason McAdley underneath that would have been short of the first down anyway and kicking time I believe for Alabama again the uh, not a very good pass by Andrew I think what he's trying to do is throw dart, darts with him and that is he's sort of aiming the football and instead of just relaxing and uh, passing the football he's throwing it and as a consequence it's erratic and uh, it looks like Alabama may go for it the right. timeout, I mean. But first, they'll talk it over a little bit more. The offense has stayed on the field, giving the impression they will go for it on 4th and 11 at the 35. Mike Dubose talking with his quarterback, 24-10, Bama. Don't forget, men's and women's basketball season just around the corner. You can order your season tickets. At 1-800-240-2300 from South Tix, or call the Alabama Ticket Office for information, 205-348-6111. The Alabama women, the first to take to the new hardwood floor at Coleman Coliseum. They'll have their first exhibition game of the year, Thursday, November 2nd. But a lot of excitement, as we mentioned a while ago, about the men's team and Coach Mark Godfrey, but Rick Moody, anxious to get his ladies out on the floor as well. That's right. Very, very exciting basketball. Be interesting to see how Jeremy Hayes comes back from his injury. Now he's got another chin injury, and he's working on that. 5.45 to play in the first half. The entire offense huddled up around head coach Mike Dubose. It's fourth and 11. Football sitting at the 35, which... We have seen Neil Thomas kick three 50-yard field goals this year. It would be a 52-yard try, which may be just out of his range. I think we're going to punt this one. And Lane Bearden will come on to punt. Lane with a solid, solid year for Alabama. Really seems to have been kicking a little bit better as of late. He said that career best 62 yarder against the Vols last weekend. Samuel, the deep man, as Bearden hangs this one up high, but will bounce at the five, take a left turn, and the tide downs it at the two. Brooks Daniels, the sliding stop, and they'll mark it inside the two, a 33 yard kick. Doug Layton, I've seen you. He's yeah. a pitching wedge like that. I wish I could hit a pitching wedge that accurately, but he just nailed it beautifully, and actually it would have gone out of its own accord. 
even without the coverage. But nonetheless, UCF with five minutes plus to go finds itself backed up 98 yards away from Pater. And the ninth time Bearden has put the opponents back inside their own 20. Corey Baker dots the eye for the Knights. And now Baker breaks out of formation. Now he wants to throw. He does throw. And Henshaw there to make the grab very close to the first down marker. And I think they will spot him out at the 13. Good for the first. He had excellent protection that time. Snyder going back. Got plenty of time. Now he looks. He throws it into actually pretty good coverage Alabama had on uh, Henshaw. But uh, Henshaw is not your run-of-the-mill receiver. He has excellent hands, and he really knows how to run perfect routes. And that's what happened that time. First down and a little breathing room for the Golden Knights. Out at the 13-yard line. Schneider to the air again. Wide open is tight end Mario Jackson. Streaking down the field. He makes the grab, takes the hit, and will have another first at the 34. Again, yard pick up that time. Again, good protection. Uh, Alabama rushing only three guys and then uh, backing up everyone else. And he completes the pass to the tight end for the first down. They wind the clock under five minutes to play in the first half. Play action, Schneider able to get it away. What a diving catch by Jackson again. The, uh, the tight end leaves his feet to make the grab that time. Again, Snyder under a little pressure that time. Alabama back to rushing four, but nonetheless, a great catch by the tight end that time. Jackson. Football now at the 46. Schneider under center. More play action. The throw near side to Henshaw. No blocking in front of it. So he'll go down just shy of midfield. Tony Dixon with the stop for the Crimson Tide. Excellent position by Tony Dixon that time as Schneider set up the Wide out screen on the left side, and uh, Tyson caught the caught the pass, but there was nowhere to go. Second down and seven for the Golden Knights, just shy of midfield. Baker on the handoff, cuts it back, finds some running room outside, ridden out of bounds. At the 37, Reggie Miles and Milo Lewis finally get him out of bounds, but after a 12-yard pickup. Good running that time by Baker. Gets some good blocking. As Alabama expecting the pass, the run works on a draw, and Baker takes it down for the first down. Nice drive in the works for the Knights. Baker we said the running game not much of a threat just try to keep the defense honest six play of the drive that started at the two Baker nowhere to go this time as Albert Means brings him down not long after he took the handoff you can take a look at Albert Means he is some kind of man and he is going to be a great one before he's through here at Alabama he's number 91 You'll see him get rid of the blocker and then go for the ball carrier. Beautiful play that time by Albert Means from Memphis, Tennessee. Second down and 11 after a loss of a yard on the play. Howard breaks out of the eye. Schneider to throw again. Goes deep down the near side. He had Henshaw wide open but he overthrew him by about five yards I don't know what happened in the Alabama secondary but Henshaw could have walked backwards into the end zone if Schneider hadn't overthrown him absolutely there was a breakdown somewhere a little pressure at that time by Alabama to uh, maybe hurry Schneider a little bit and that might have caused him to overthrow 
At any rate, that was six points for sure. So Alabama dodges a bullet that time. And Central Florida is going to spend a timeout with 2.41 to play in the first half. A crucial third down for them upcoming. Monday night, 7 o'clock from Wings here in Tuscaloosa. Mike Dubos joins Eli Gold to talk about this game on Hey Coach, weekly coaches call-in show on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Mark Godfrey, Rick Moody, others I'm sure also will join in the conversation and the good food at Wings. Monday night, 7 to 8.30 on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. We were talking earlier about uh, Central Florida and their athletic director, who is Steve Sloan, very well known in these parts. But he's done an uh, excellent job, I think, of mixing uh, the opponents up. A couple of uh, teams like in Alabama, this is the first time to play Alabama, though, but they've played Florida, they played Georgia, they played Georgia Tech earlier on this year. And then uh, they also play Northwest Louisiana. They slipped up against Akron, William & Mary, Eastern Michigan, those kind of schools. So it's a very good mix for this school. It's only been one A for five years. They are an independent, not affiliated with a conference in football, a member of the TAC and everything else. They've expressed a desire to join CUSA. And, uh, but they, they're right. They need to get into a conference because it uh, eliminates any kind of scheduling problems you have as an independent, freshly 1A. You hear Central Florida, and you probably think kind of a small school. Mm -mm. No, sir. 34,000 the enrollment in Orlando. That's almost double what Alabama has. Third and 11, as the Knights have had their talk. Three wide outs for Snyder in the shotgun. Pressured, but gets it away, and it is caught for a first down. Jimmy Frizzell on the near sideline makes the grab in front of Kelf Bailey, and they'll move the chains on a big third down conversion. You can see Alabama's bringing two linebackers on a full blitz, and that means you've got man-to-man -man coverage, and they're going to go to Kelf Bailey almost every time because he's giving up a few uh, inches and in thighs on the left side. You better get to the quarterback if you're going to blitz like that. It's a first down at the tie 25. By far the best drive of the game for the Golden Knights. Snyder checking off at the line. Whistle sound. They'll blow this one dead, and it may be a good thing. There's a flag on the play. Kenny Clark had the catch and a lot of green grass in front of him, but... It may be a false start on the offense. It looked like Aries Monroe jumped, but uh, he did not touch anyone, and he came back, and then it looked like offside. the offense. Well, they call the him for offside. Drew the offensive guy. Yeah. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Aries Monroe did the jump, and the offensive line reacted. Here's Monroe, there's the jump, and here's the reaction to the left end there. the team bothered too much by the flags which was not the case last weekend in Knoxville they were flying everywhere option look by the Knights to pick back to Howard he bowled over as he approaches the first down marker but will be just a little bit shy here's Snyder running the option sort of and that's uh Locher over there chasing him and finally they knock him out of bounds Howard the fullback Almost trying to, like, trying to tackle a manhole cover. Second down. Just over a yard to play. Howard takes the handoff over the left side. He will fall forward and pick up the first down. Marcus Spencer trips him up. Spencer got back there behind uh, the line of scrimmage and had an opportunity for the big play that time, but uh, he did knock him down, but not before he picked up a few yards. He need to wrap him, break down and wrap him up, if you possibly can, to get him in the backfield. But uh, nonetheless, all of a sudden, it's first down inside the 15 for the, uh, for the Knights. 
90 seconds to play in the first half. First down, Snyder to throw into the end zone. Touchdown. Tyson Henshaw, he lost the helmet, but he held on to the football. And a 98-yard drive capped off. And the Tide can't believe it. You see a couple of defensive backs there discussing it. Um, Lewis and Kelf Bailey, they were back there, but for some, and he had all day to throw, and he rifled it into the end zone. No, that was Dixon and Lewis. And then Kelf Bailey comes in also discussing uh, coverage. Why weren't you there and what happened and so forth. And that was a beautiful drive staged by Central Florida in the waning moments of this, uh, this half. For Leggy for the extra point try. Low snap, but a good hold, and the kick is good. Tyson Henshaw, we said, had a tough week of practice, separated his shoulder on Tuesday, but he caught this one in traffic. And he was wide open. As I said earlier, the guy runs at excellent, excellent uh, roots. He was wide, and he, he just found the crease, and he was in position, and the ball was thrown perfectly by Schneider. Tenth touchdown reception for Tyson Henshaw. Milo Lewis, not real happy about it, discarded <laughs> Henshaw's helmet as it rolled around. His numbers on the day. Told you what a great game he had last week against Louisiana Monroe. His brother, Darren, was a quarterback for the Golden Knights not too long ago and is now the quarterback's coach at UCF. Coming into the game today, Tyson Henshaw needed uh, only two passes to move past number eight, Mark Nonsant, on the uh, most caught list in a career. So he's, he's accomplished that feat. What an impressive drive for UCF. Made up a lot of the clock. 11 plays, 98 yards. And mixed the run in just enough just on enough. that drive. Mostly passing. Now, how many passes has Henshaw caught today? Three. So that moves him past to number eight. And number, yeah, number eight. He, he needs two more to pass number six. Four leggy to kick it away again. He's had a busy first half. I guess the most the kickers have. I guess the most famous player that's come out of Central Florida is Dante. Culpepper, who plays for the Minnesota Vikings now. This kick a little shorter. John Ray takes it at the five. Flags fly as Shantu goes down at the 26-yard line. We'll check the marker as Rico Joseph credited with the tackle. And it'll probably be that dreaded illegal block in the back. And it is. Doug Layton, a soothsayer. That's what they usually call. Doing the run back. On the run Blocking the back against the receiving team. Ten-yard penalty. It will be first down. So Alabama. Hopefully will be inspired before halftime and can do something with a minute 20 to go. I hope so, too. After watching the impressive drive by the Golden Knights, let's see what the Alabama offense can come up with. A minute 20 and one timeout. Play it safe on first down to give to Maya Reed, but UCF was waiting on that, and they'll drop Brandon for a loss on the play. Clock rolling. Alabama may be content to try and just run it out if they can. I think they can, and that's what uh, UCL, uh, UCF is uh, anticipating because with just uh, less than a minute to go, they're going to see Brandon Myrie with the ball, probably. Coming up at halftime, we'll give you the feel that you're actually at the game. Inside handoff to McClintock for a yard or two in Central Florida is going to Call a timeout, kill the clock with 37 seconds. The Golden Knights band is here. They will perform at halftime. And of course, the Alabama band will perform. And then the crowning of the homecoming queen. We'll show you all that here at halftime. Chris Stewart on the sidelines. What you got for us? 
David, Doug, just a moment ago mentioned Dante Culpepper, of course, former quarterback at UCF, now the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. And talking with the Golden Knights head coach Mike Kruzek earlier this week, he talked about what a huge plus it has been for recruiting at UCF for Dante Culpepper to have the type of success he's had. It shows players in the state that may wonder if they want to go to Central Florida. Yes, if you do succeed, you can be noticed by scouts in the NFL and get that opportunity to be a, a first-round pick and also get a starting opportunity. He has done wonders from a credibility standpoint for their program and also helping players realize they can not only go to UCF and play, they can also play at the next level after going through the Golden Knights program. Thank you, Chris. And I tell you what, Doug, looking at Mike Kruzek on the sidelines, I believe they could put him in a uniform and he could still play. I think he could, too. Chris was probably right in the middle of the cheerleaders on that last report. Was he atop the pyramid over there? I think so. <laughs> 37 seconds. Alabama looking at a third and nine. Actually, each team now with one timeout remaining. Zow will throw. Safe pass outside to Millens. He is wrapped up and dropped immediately. Travis Fisher there for the tackle. And UCF will spend its final time out of the half. Zow dropped straight back. He's looking at Millens all the way. He never looked anywhere else and got it to him. But uh, the guy on the spot there to drop him for practically no gain was Fisher. So Alabama will have to punt it away. And the Knights should get some decent starting position unless Lane Bearden can come through with another career best kick here just before halftime. Andrew Zhao and A.C. Carter was just chatting on the sidelines walking along talking to each other. Carter might have been saying I know you were looking for Millen, but I tell you, I was wide open on the right side. They're always wide open, That's aren't they? True. Ryan Schneider visiting with Mike Kruzek as the Knights will get the ball back with a little time remaining before intermission. Strange game. Back and forth so far. 10-0 Golden Knights early in the first quarter. Alabama with 24 straight to lead 24 to 10, but just a few moments ago, a great drive by UCF to make it a 24-17 ball game. And the Knights will bring all 11 men up. Trying to make something happen on the special team. Nobody back deep to return the punt. Beard gets it away and he hits a missile. Bounces. At the 37, we'll keep rolling to the 27. What a great opportunity uh, Bearden had that time. It, had he been able to call an audible and get a receiver just four, four or five yards downfield, it would have been touchdown. 60-yard punt, not a career long, but Mike Dubose will certainly take it off the foot of Lane Bearden, and the gamble fails a little bit for UCF. They're backed up now at their own 27 with just 18 ticks remaining on the clock. We'll see what the Knights want to do. Backed up deep. They work out of the eye formation and Schneider will simply take a knee to end the first half. It was all or nothing going for the punt block. They came away empty and will be, I would imagine, very happy. The Knights heading to the locker room, trailing just 24-17 to the Crimson Tide. Absolutely. They're going to go into the uh, locker room, and they're going to say, we're still in this ball game. We've got a chance to knock Alabama off, and that's the danger part of Alabama because they really are in a position to do so, and Alabama's really got to continue to play it hard down steady knucks. Tide trailed 10 to nothing in the first quarter, led 24 to 10 in the second. But as the teams head to their locker rooms, it's 24-17, Alabama leading Central Florida at halftime.
Stay with us. More from Tuscaloosa in just a moment. Seventh grader at a small underfunded school learns science via satellite. A new graduate finds a friend in an unfamiliar place. A rural mother is thankful for long-needed medical help. A freshman learns that her teacher is also her friend. The University of Alabama, touching lives and making a difference around the world and right next door.
coming halftime ceremony. Leading the Million Dollar Band onto the field are drum majors Amanda Garnett, Andy Pettis, and Chris Schwann. Now under the direction of Ms. Catherine Scott, assisted by Neil Blom, the proud men and women of the Million Dollar Band. On behalf of the University of Alabama, the 2000 SGA Homecoming Committee welcomes all alumni and guests to the university and to our annual festivities. From the founding of our great university in 1831, the University of Alabama has been blessed with a rich tradition of excellence in academics and athletics. The capstone has created a rich history of achievements and accomplishments among its many alumni. And now, SGA Homecoming Chairperson Christina Graffio will present the 2000 Grand Marshal Johnny Musso with a gift of appreciation on behalf of the student body for his achievements as an undergraduate and alum of the university. Now, please congratulate the winners at the homecoming competitions. In lawn decoration, third place, Alpha Chi Omega. Second place, Phi Mu. And first place, Zeta Tau Alpha. In the parade competition, third place, Alpha Delta Pi. Second place, Pi Beta Phi. And first place, Phi Mu. It's time for the 2000 SGA Homecoming Committee to announce the recipient of the Homecoming Spirit Cup. The Spirit Cup is awarded to the organization that has exhibited the most pride and spirit at the university during the week of homecoming. The Homecoming Committee extends congratulations to Phi Mu Sorority and is proud to announce they have won the Spirit Cup. One of the most exciting events of homecoming is the presentation of the Queen and her court. On Tuesday, nearly 3,000 students voted on members of the homecoming court. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the University of Alabama homecoming court will take their places on the field. Homecoming halftime directors Ginger Watkins and David Patton will present each participant with flowers. Miss Jessica Carmichael is the daughter of Deborah Thomas from Oakman, Alabama. She is a senior majoring in accounting and is sponsored by Kappa Alpha Theta. She is escorted by her grandfather, Charlie Carmichael. Miss LaDonna Carpenter is the daughter of Gilliam and Lola Carpenter from Huntsville. She is a senior in environmental sciences and is sponsored by Gamma Sigma Sigma Service Sorority. She is escorted by her father. Miss Joni Crenshaw is the daughter of Jonas and Harji Crenshaw from Meridian, Mississippi. She is a senior in secondary education and sponsored by the Student Athlete Advisory Board. She is escorted by her father. Miss Holly Johnson is the daughter of Steve and Rosemary Johnson from Birmingham. She is a senior in food and nutrition and is sponsored by Alpha Chi Omega. She is escorted by her father. Miss Amanda Ellis is the daughter of Gary and Janet Ellis from Gulf Shores, Alabama. She is a senior in civil engineering and is sponsored by Pi Beta Phi. She is escorted by her father. Now, the 1999 homecoming queen, Reagan Croyle, will assist the president of the University of Alabama, Dr. Andrew Sorensen, in crowning the 2000 homecoming queen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to announce the 2000 homecoming queen, Miss Amanda Ellis. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2000 University of Alabama homecoming queen and her court.
24-17, our score at halftime. The Crimson Tide leading the Golden Knights as we welcome you back to Bryant-Denny Stadium. David Crane along with Doug Layton. Glad to have you with us here on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. Homecoming at the Capstone. Able to share a little of the homecoming festivities at halftime with you. Amanda Ellis, the homecoming queen. We congratulate her. Doug Layton, a slow start again for the Alabama offense, but somebody found the switch somewhere in the first quarter and turned it on. They started playing a lot better offensively, and it could be the running of Brandon Myrie that sparked them. Uh, but still, the quarterback, Andrew Zhao, is still a little off on his passing, and if they could get that going, it could be a different story here in the second half. They're still not playing as much as one as I'm sure Coach Dubose and his staff would like. The Alabama defense played pretty well for that first half, giving up the 10 points, but all 10 points came off of turnovers in the red zone. The only disappointing part had to be that 98-yard drive by the Golden Knights just before halftime. That's right, I, and it's hard to explain sometimes. You've got a team backed up at their own two-yard line. You're in the uh, waning moments of the half, and the next thing you know, they're into position, and you found yourself backed up, and sometimes those, uh, those kind of things happen. And... Uh, and those two turnovers that uh, the interception that Andrew threw for eventual touchdowns, the uh, first one was an excellent play by the Central Florida guy, just an excellent play. The second one, I'm sure Andrew would like to have it back, but uh, uh, he's just still a little off, and I'm sure he's thinking about that right now. A look at some of the first half highlights. There is that tremendous play by McKibben deflecting the ball in the air and then making the interception. That would lead to this touchdown pass by Ryan Schneider. To Kenny Clark. Not long after that, Zao turns it over again. And that's the one. The first one by McKibben was an excellent play by him, but that one uh, Andrew would like to have back, I'm sure. All of a sudden, it's 10 to nothing. Defense held him out of the end zone. It was 10 nothing, but then, as you said, Doug, the spark was Brandon Myrick. And what a magnificent run this is. He shed a couple of tacklers just as he crossed the line of scrimmage and took it all the way into the end zone. And what a great screen pass this is to uh, Draper, who stumbled for just a moment, but once he got his feet under him, he moved that 290-pound frame as quickly as he could downfield. And the turnover bug bites the Golden Knights. Tony Dixon on the interception. That would lead to this Neil Thomas field goal. Thomas has really been a threat for Alabama anywhere around the 50-yard uh, 50 50-yard dive. He's capable of making the... Uh, the field goal and here's another touchdown Alabama forces the fumble and then picked up and returned 20 plus yards for the touchdown 24 to 10 at that point but a great drive by the Golden Knights just before halftime Henshaw the touchdown grab to make it 24 17 the total yards a lot closer than they were late in the first half but that impressive drive by UCF even things up and the turnovers dead even at two apiece. That's right, and the time of possession, you'll note there, is almost the same. So, Alabama has not, they have not put away the Golden Knights, not yet. We go down to the field now. Chris Stewart, a very special halftime guest, a member of the homecoming court and standout athlete at the university, Joni Crenshaw. That's right, David. One of the perks of working sidelines on homecoming. You get a chance, hopefully, to talk with somebody in the homecoming court. Joni Crenshaw, a member of the homecoming court after a great career and another year to go on the basketball court as well. I know it's very uh, exciting for you to represent the athletic department as part of the homecoming court, Joni. It is. It's just an honor to be out here, you know, to be selected on the court. And the way we do it, the athletes vote on um, a senior athlete. And it's just an honor to be voted to represent the athletes and to make to actually make the court. You know, it's just unbelievable. I'm really excited. One of your best friends, the winner last year, Reagan Croyle, the uh, homecoming queen from last season. I know that made it even more special for you this year. Yes, it is. Reagan and I are very close. And it was just great to be out there with her. 
Let's talk about the start of the season. Just a couple of weeks away. How do things look so far? We look really good. I actually missed the scrimmage this morning, so I don't know how happy Coach Moody is about that. But um, we open up next Thursday against uh, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, I think. And so we're excited about that. We're ready to get going. Joni, congratulations. Best of luck this year. Thanks. Joni Crenshaw, member of the homecoming court, here part of the homecoming festivities in Tuscaloosa, David. Thanks a lot, Chris. 24-17, the score at the half. Back with the third quarter kickoff in just a moment. A seventh grader at a small underfunded school learns science via satellite. A new graduate finds a friend in an unfamiliar place. A rural mother is thankful for long-needed medical help. A freshman learns that her teacher is also her friend. The University of Alabama, touching lives and making a difference around the world and right next door. Getting ready for the third quarter in Tuscaloosa, 24-17 Alabama lead. At the half, Mike Dubose had his talk with his club during the intermission. And after the sluggish start by the offense, Alabama, for the most part, played pretty well in that first half. They sure did. The defensively, they, they except for the long drive, uh, they've done they've done very very well. But uh, this uh, this is the type of opponent that you can't allow to just sort of hang around. You really need to put the firm hand on them and take control of the ball game. And I'm sure that's what Alabama discussed at halftime. Back deep, Shante Samuel. Ready to feel the kickoff, as we said, US, uh, UCF won the toss and deferred. So they will get the football to start the third quarter. Samuel from the four brings it back. Tries to slip outside and takes it across the 20 to the 21-yard line, where Brooks Daniels brings it down. And that is where the Golden Knights will set up shop to start the third quarter. We mentioned the drive before the half, and most of it can be credited to Ryan Schneider, who padded his numbers a little bit on that 98-yard march to the end zone. Really had been ineffective after throwing the first touchdown pass after the turnover in the first quarter. We started out with beautiful blue sky, now kind of an overcast day. The lights are on at Brian Denny, Corey Baker, the run on first down. Still in there for Edward Mack, who was shaken up on that fumble that led directly to an Alabama touchdown. A nice start for UCF. The draw play right up the middle, and Alabama relaxed a little bit. Picked up seven on the play. Schneider works under center on second and three. Lobs this one up. A lot of contact, and the flags come in. Kel Bailey in the coverage on Jimmy Frizzell, but it looked like he may have had him handcuffed as they went down the field. The flags flew, and Kel was pointing at the other guy, saying, hey, it was Frizzell, not me. But uh, the official will make the call. And I'm sure it'll be against Alabama. Kelf Bailey getting the start Pass today. interference against the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. It will be an automatic first down. We'll have another look at it. There's uh, Snyder, the quarterback, looking uh, and then lobs it downfield. And by the time we get there, he's already on the ground asking for the flag. What you got? 15-yard step off against the Crimson Tide. We said Bailey starting in what is usually Gerald Dixon's spot, but Gerald is out likely for the rest of the year. Broken hand. An injury that plagued him since high school and going to have to get it taken care of. Pitch back to Baker, who's in a world of trouble, and down he goes. The option look again, but the Tide was ready for that. Jared Johnson shot through to disrupt the play from the beginning. Jared Johnson was the man on the spot that time looking play the pitch guy. And uh, he almost grabbed him by the face mask, but he didn't. 
And by the time uh, Jarrett could get up, his teammates had arrived on the scene and uh, knocked the runner, Baker, down. Second down, officially 17 now after that big loss. Back to the shotgun for Schneider. Davis along the near boundary. Oakland will dance out of bounds. At the 47, picks up 11 on the play. You see uh, Snyder moving and uh, buys a little time that way, but uh, his receiver, Davis, was wide open, getting quite a cushion that time at the Alabama secondary, knowing they needed uh, some 17 yards, and uh, that wouldn't get it for them. That sets up a third and now manageable six for the Golden Knights. Tide shows blitz. Here they come. Schneider throws. Caught. And a first down. Kenny Clark over the middle making the grab in front of Milo Lewis. And that will move the chains. It's a first down at the Bama 40. You can take a look at Clark that time. He goes down and in. And then he's in front of the defender. The pass is thrown right on the numbers. It's an easy catch for Kenny Clark. And it's a first down for Central Florida. And this drive is beginning to look a little like what we saw at the end of the first half. Flag come in. Loose ball. It will belong to the Tide, but the flag is down, and I think Alabama was offside. And we'll take a look, and I'm sure you're going to notice uh, an Alabama defender jumping off just as the jumping offside, just as the ball was snapped. But let's let uh, the official tell us. Rocky Good is our man. And if there is a wall somewhere, Mike Dubose may be ramming his head against it as we speak. His defense. Came up with a turnover, All sides. All sides. but... On the defense, five-yard penalty. Remain first down. Here you go. And uh, there was the jump offside that time. And it was Kenny Smith, number 88, who was the guy that jumped off. Trying to anticipate the count. That's something that drives the uh, coach is crazy because he's playing right over the ball, and he's not supposed to move until the ball does five flags against Alabama and some costly ones here early in the second half. Alabama shows blitz again. Schneider pummeled as he lets it go and it falls incomplete. He really took a pop from Jarrett Johnson right as he loaded up to throw. Nobody touches Johnson. It was Odom I could think. 98 was the guy that came through. There he is. Antoine, Antoine Odom. Odom, a pure freshman, a true freshman from South Alabama. He is a specialist at putting pressure on the quarterback. He did it there. Second down. And five. Baker in the backfield alongside Snyder. We want the timeout. Play clock was winding down. And UCF will spend the timeout. 12.40 to play in the third quarter. And the Golden Knights with a nice drive going. 24-17, the Tide leads it over the Golden Knights. Don't forget, you can stay up to date on all of the Crimson Tide teams on the Internet at RollTide.com, the official athletic website of the University of Alabama. A link to the Crimson Tide Sports Network broadcast. You can follow events live all at RollTide.com. Tide defense huddled up around coordinator Ellis Johnson. Charlie Harbison also there in your screen on the left side. The right. defensive Harbison. backfield coach. That's right. Came down to Alabama from Clemson. Mike Dubos. Not real happy, I'm sure, with what he has seen early in the third quarter because this looks a lot, Doug, as you said, like that 98-yard march the Golden Knights had just before intermission. But right now, 
the uh, the Knights have called this timeout because they came up to the line of scrimmage and did not like, uh, at least Schneider didn't like what he saw, because all of a sudden it seems that the Alabama defense is starting to stiffen a bit inside the 40-yard line. Football rests at the 35 of Alabama. As the Golden Knights break the huddle. Four wide receivers. Baker in the backfield. Movement again up front, and the officials will blow this play dead. There's a flag on the play. Alabama was bringing a lot of people that time. I saw Rashid. He was into the backfield. We'll see what Rocky Goot says. Everybody pointing at each other. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start, movement in the offensive line. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. This time, the step off against the Golden Knights. So back it up, and it's now second and 10. Second and 10 from the Alabama 40. This drive seems to be taking forever. This will be the third attempt at running the second down play. Schneider barking out signals. Here comes the blitz. Avoids one man and almost intercepted. Milo Lewis had it in his hands but couldn't make the catch. Salim Rashid came with pressure from the outside, but Schneider stepped up to avoid it. Look at Salim Rashid coming from your right side. A good block that time to get him off the back of Schneider. But Salim timed the, the blitz perfectly. He started about five or six yards back and took off running. And oddly enough, the center snapped the ball perfectly for him, and he's into the backfield. Now third and ten from the 40. Bama showing blip, movement again up front. I think again the uh, Central Florida guys were getting a little antsy because Alabama was bringing just about everybody up to the line of scrimmage to show blitz, and they were dancing around, and it uh, is going to be offside, I guess, against Alabama at least. That could be the call, but let's wait and see. Prior to the snap, encroachment. By the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. We've had on this uh, series right here from the 40-yard line about three or four penalties and why are they stepping it off against UCF when the call was against Alabama? Well, Rocky Good pulled out his coin. It came up heads, so this is a Rocky Horror show. They changed their mind midstream, and it becomes a flag against UCF. So now, third and 15 from the 45. Snyder, plenty of time. It is caught by whom flags are down as well I think it may be a completion for the Golden Knights let's see Alabama said it's an interception no real sign from the officials other than it other than it being a catch but a marker down as well Reggie Miles is, as you see him talking to the official is uh, quite sure it was uh, or Milo Lewis I guess it is no it's Reggie Miles talking to him here we go. Pass interference against the defense. The result of the play and the penalty are the same. Be a first down. So it was a catch for the Golden Knights. Well, that's good for Snyder because it goes into the record books as a catch and not a penalty. I don't see what he did wrong, but it, uh, unless it was uh, Calf Bailey coming over the back from behind because uh, it looked like uh, Reggie Miles was in good position for the play. Jimmy Frizzell apparently got in that mix and took the ball away for the catch. So it's a first down 
at the 29. What a play by Schneider. Back to the ground, Baker with a stiff arm, tries to get outside and not much success. Darius Gilbert able to string that play out and ride him out of bounds. As Albert Means who turned him back in and Gilbert wrapped him up. Uh, Kev Baylor was in on the tackle, as was uh, Aries Monroe. They were all over there knocking him out of bounds. Gains one on the play, does Corey Baker. Whistle sound. And Kelf Bailey having helmet trouble is going to head to the sidelines. The officials step in and stop play. He'll be replaced by Carlos Andrews. He lost his helmet, as you saw on the replay, and apparently lost some of the padding in there as well. So Tank Connerly will go to work on the Alabama sidelines. <laughs> Get him a new helmet. Yeah, he lost it the last three plays in a row there. The helmet came uh, came off. Second down and nine for UCF. Four wide receivers. Schneider in the gun. Steps up. Throws over the middle. It is bottled and dropped by Jimmy Frizzell. Connie Brown with the coverage may have gotten a hand in there to pop it away from the intended receiver. I think that's exactly what happened. But look at this. Snyder's got all day to throw the football. Uh, a little pressure with the play, but he just stepped up out of the uh, out of harm's way and got the ball away. And it was slapped down by an Alabama defender. And I believe the play was done by Brown. Kel Bailey checks back in now. On third and ten. Alabama going with the nickel look on third and long. Movement again up front. There's a flag on the play. Central Florida started uh, the second half with the kickoff. And it seemed like it was two or three days ago. <laughs> Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, the teams keep exchanging offsides and false start penalties. That's right, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, so far, it's been uh, UCF, uh, UCF that has been the benefactor. That takes it to the tie 22, where it'll be third and about three. Omari Howard checks into the backfield for UCF. He gets the handoff, the draw up the middle, first down and more. Brought down inside the 15-yard line. Caught Bama a little off guard that time. Adam Cox on the tackle. 41 yards in penalties on this drive alone. And a Golden Knight still down, making an Alabama player still down. Maybe Marcus Spencer. Howard that time with the draw takes it right up the middle picks up the first down and Spencer is still on the ground there you see 41 but what you do see also is uh, his leg movement uh, Chris you got something for us yeah I do Doug you know Alabama's offense chomping at the bit to get a chance to have the football here in the second half but so is Tyler Watts, young man who's on the sideline now for Alabama, successful knee surgery a little over a week ago. You, your heart goes out for him because he worked so hard to earn the opportunity to be the starting quarterback at Alabama, then to have an injury very early in a ball game just a couple of weeks ago. You know it's tough on him to, to watch his teammates struggle as they, has, as they have over the last couple of weeks. Well, you couldn't be more right, uh, Chris, and uh, that's exactly what we've got is Tyler would have probably had an opportunity last week and certainly maybe even today to get the offense m moving but uh, it's Andrew Zow's baby right now and I'll bet they are chomping at the bit to get into the ball game. There's Tyler Watts. He's uh, had a successful knee operation in Birmingham. You can see the brace a week or so ago on that left leg underneath the pants. Bart Ralston. Bart Ralston who not, is as big not as sharing most. much of the bench with him is he. <laughs> And Bart is bigger than most ordinary mountains. Tony Dixon, a bruised sternum. He is out for the moment. We'll check and see if he makes it back in. So the defense a little depleted 
at the moment. First down, crowd trying to get into it. Spur on the defense. Schneider takes the snap, but a false start kills this play. This is agonizing to watch. It really is. I don't know how many plays they've redone since this drive started at the 20-yard line. Dead ball. Six flags. Ball start. Movement in the offensive line. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Six flag on this drive. Look at that. They've had the ball almost five minutes on this drive. Step off takes it back to the 19. But it's still first down. Still plenty of time for more movement and more encroachment <laughs> calls. 12 flags on the teams combined, over 100 yards in penalty. First and 15. Blitz comes, Schneider setting up the screen to Jackson. He's tied in at the 10. Wrestled down from behind by Adam Cox as he gets out. Out of bounds at the seven yard line. Perfect play called by the Golden Knights. A screen pass to the tight end. That's Mario Jackson. Uh, he takes it and turns it upfield. Adam Cox runs him down and takes him out, but uh, not before he picked up a big first down. He's not all that big, 6'2, 230, but he does pose a problem if he's wide open on the left side. Second and two. Pardon me, he didn't get the first down. Confusion. Baker takes the handoff. A nice little cutback move to avoid a big loss on the play, but he will lose yardage. Marcus Spencer, back in the game, gets him to the ground, but a mix-up in the backfield. That's right. Something uh, went awry for the Knights, and then a couple of miss, uh, missed tackles, and then Spencer breaks down, and Drops him. No gain on the play. Might have even lost a half a yard. Football at the nine. He lost a couple. It's third and four. Clock rolling and even nine minutes to play in the third period. This is the opening possession of the second half. Schneider looking, throwing wide open. Henshaw, who will score? Touchdown, UCF. Somebody completely forgot about Tyson Henshaw. He just drifted over to the right side into the flat, standing in the sunshine. He was the only guy in the sunshine. And Snyder finally picked him out. And he was wide open. And I'll bet you that uh, Tyson Henshaw was more worried about the ball getting to him than anything else because he could see the Alabama defender once he spotted him take off in his direction, but it was too late. And there was the completion of about an 80-yard drive that took way over five minutes to complete. Extra point is good by Borlegi. The kicker still down on the play. Here you go. Here's the throw from Snyder. Perfect strike. He almost dropped it. It was so perfectly thrown and he was so wide open it scares you your receiver almost hyperventilates when he sees himself so wide open and uh, there's the injured player for leggy the kicker still yep. down a personal foul roughing the kicker against alabama but the point after is good we are tied at 24 in the third Ryan Schneider has really picked it up at the end of the first half and on the opening drive of the second half, second touchdown toss to Tyson Henshaw on the day. 14 points actually unanswered by Alabama that uh, Schneider has engineered by his, uh, you could almost say that his good nights as he takes them on a 98 yard drive to end the first half and here an 80 yard drive to open the second. Javier Berlegi, as you see, walking off to the Golden Knights sideline. We'll see if he's able to handle the kickoff. And Schneider, the red shirt freshman from Plantation, Florida, as we said, he was third in America in pass efficiency, a rating of 163 points. 
7'5", and he's had three 300-yard games already this year. He's sitting alongside number 13, his favorite receiver, Hinshaw, who just scored that touchdown for the Golden uh, Knights. And that uh, penalty on roughing the kicker against Alabama has been assessed here on the kickoff. So Central Florida should have no trouble getting it into the end zone from the 50 if they don't try an onside kick instead. Another nice march to the end zone for the Golden Knights. Aided greatly by the white flag, uh, the yellow flag, rather. Oh. Five penalties, 56 yards against Alabama on that drive. Four legging will shake it off, apparently. And kick it away. And he will put that one through the end zone from the 50. No trouble after the 15-yard step off against Alabama for the personal foul. So touchback, bring it out to the 20. And Alabama will have its first shot at it in the second half. 8.47 to play in the third quarter. The Alabama offense has been on the side for so long they probably need to do some calisthenics to get warmed up again to start the second half. But here they come. Andrew Zhao is the leader. And here we go. 24-24. We start anew. Ahmad Galloway will start the second half in the Bama backfield. McClintock drifts into motion the pitch to Galloway, who turns the corner. Steps out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But a great block by McClintock to seal the corner. Good block by Hogan. You saw that right there. And there's McClintock rolling his guy up. And now you can see him step out right there at the 35. The official was right on the spot. Good run, good opening play by Galloway, first down Bama. 15 yards. The gallop for Ahmad Galloway. Relieved by Brandon Myrie in the first half. Gets the call again. First down. Nice little cutback move as he moves it out to the 41. Rico Joseph, the recipient of that nice block from Dustin McClintock, a play before, makes the tackle. Right now, Alabama really does need to establish the run to get the uh, to bring those uh, defensive uh, guys up, and then maybe Andrew can find an open passing lane and get something going upstairs. Four wide receivers, the triple stack to the far side for Zao, with Galloway behind him. Andrew will check off, four, three, two on the play clock as he snaps it. That pass yeah. thrown right behind Jason McAdley, the intended receiver picked off by David Bush, and it's a touchdown for the Golden Knights. High and behind McAdley. Bush there to make the play, sprints to the end zone, 47 yards, and the Knights have retaken the lead. Zhao threw the ball without looking. He never saw the defensive guy, Bush, and he threw it behind the receiver. Zhao goes over and tries to make the stop, and then McCadley tries to make the stop, but he's Bush is into the end zone, and it looks like uh, Bush is Bush. Third interception thrown by Andrew Zhao today, and that one really smarts. Extra point by Berlegi on the money. And it's now 21 unanswered points by UCF. The INT and return for a score by David Bush. And the Golden Knights lead by a touchdown. McCadley, as you can see, was the intended receiver, and he tried to run him down, but uh, he, he hit him, but too late. Third interception for Bush on the year, and the 12th now by the Golden Knights defense. And I'm, Andrew has got to be just uh, right down low as you can be right now. And uh, Chris, uh, it's got to be a sad sight on the Alabama bench. 
Well, they've rallied it, actually, uh, Doug, in a huddle on the far side, and I think trying to rally the troops. They have completely taken the crowd out of this ball game. Folks sitting on their hands right now, pretty much stunned, as the rest of us are, as it appeared not too long ago that Alabama had taken control of this football game, only to see, as you mentioned, UCF score 21 unanswered points at the present time. I know it would be a tremendous thing, but... Uh, the Alabama coaching staff may be considering the the walk-on non-scholarship quarterback, Jonathan Ritchie. Don't be surprised. He didn't look too badly in the, his play game before last. Got about 12 snaps in the game against Ole Miss as Berlegi drives it to the five-yard line. Sean Ray on the return for Alabama. Bouncing off tacklers, he takes it across. The 25 yard line. So, as you said, it would not be shocking to see Jonathan Ritchie called upon. But Andrew Zhao is there and will stay in. And, and you're right, Doug. Ritchie did look very solid, very comfortable in that game against Ole Miss, but sort of have to qualify that. That game was well, well in hand when Jonathan came on. That's correct. This would be a different story. And Andrew's been there. He just uh, needs to settle down and shake it off if he can. Hands it off to Galloway. Out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. And something you never like to hear. A few boo birds in the air as Andrew came back out on the field. A six yard game. Second and four, number 32. Clock rolling, seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Second and four. Up the gut, McClintock, a big hole. A stiff arm for good measure, and Big Red lumbers to the UCF 34. He took Damian Demps and Ashante Samuel for a little ride that time. Thank you. Take a look, the youngster from Texas right up the middle. Excellent blocking, had a great hole. Nobody laid a hand on him. And uh, these two guys are thinking about it before they wrap him up, and finally they do and pull him down. But not before McClintock had picked up a big first down, by far Alabama's best showing here in the second half. Of course, they've only had three snaps in the second half. 34-yard trot or something like that for Dustin McClintock, and the Golden Knights will take a timeout their second of the second half 653 to play in the third quarter Alabama trailed at 10 to nothing led 24 to 10 and now trails 31 24 here in the third Alabama if they can get this ball down and in the position to tie up the ball game. They could still take control and tuck this one into the win column. But uh, unfortunately, UCF is not rolling over. We mentioned the longer you let a team like UCF stay in it, the more confident they are, and they are brimming at the moment. Chris Stewart, what you got? Uh, guys, it's been the heavyweights that have done the damage for Alabama offensively. Do you realize two of the three biggest offensive plays have been put together by guys with a combined weight, 540 pounds? Sean Draper on that tight end screen and also the big run by McClintock. They'd make a heck of a tag team in the WWF. Fumble. Ball still loose and the Golden Knights fall on it. Looked like a little confusion. Bama trying to run the end around with Antonio Carter. He never got the handoff. And Fred Harley fell on the loose ball. Here's the, Zow's got the ball now, and Carter never got it. He thought it was a fake, I guess. And uh, because he wrapped up and continued the fake out, then it was recovered by uh, Harley. And again, the Alabama offense self-destructs. Fourth turnover of the day for Alabama, and the Golden Knights have capitalized on the previous three. See what they can do here. Baker, a few nice moves to get outside. 
and moves the ball out to the 43-yard line. Marcus Spencer, Kelf Bailey team up for the stop. Yep, they just, uh, the Alabama defense that time, not allowing him to get around the corner, and finally hemmed him up and dropped him right around the 43, but he managed to pick up a couple of three on the play. And you can see the UCF players, they are very, very, very excited because they knew the only way that they were going to beat Alabama here at Bryant-Denny Stadium was if the tide was not at its sharpest. Schneider, the deep drop to throw. Over the middle, incomplete. Great coverage by Milo Lewis to bat that one away from Tyson Henshaw, the intended receiver. He was there, Alabama's... Uh, Milo Lewis, but the pass was thrown way behind him, and had he led him properly, he might have made the catch and uh, been chugging on into the end zone by now. The turnover is such a story today, and that's what Mike Kruzek harped on earlier in the week. He said when he looks at Alabama on film, he sees one of the most talented, maybe the most talented team they have seen all year. But when Alabama turns it over, they lose. When they don't turn it over, they win, and certainly the case last week and the case right now today to the air again by Schneider and that ball is dropped Jimmy Frizzell had it in his hands and just dropped it you can take a look Frizzell is going down and out and uh, as you see again Schneider has all day and Frizzell should have had it but uh, in coverage for Alabama that time of course was Milo Lewis who slapped it out that very close to a catch and a fumble. But on fourth down, Berlegi will punt. Low snap, but he gets it away. End over end kick. He boots it away from Millens, and look at this roll. Checks up nicely inside the 10. Looked like it was going to be disastrous for the Golden Knights, and it turns out great. 49-yard punt. And so the turnover doesn't do serious damage for Alabama. 5.38 to play in the third quarter. It's a 31-24 UCF lead. Alabama basketball just around the corner. Season tickets available for the men and women. Call the Alabama ticket office for information. Order directly from South Tix at 1-800-240-2300. The Alabama offense takes over. The give to Galloway. Surging forward to the 10-yard line. A gain of a yard at best. You don't like to see your offense in such a position that is inside the 10-yard line, your own 10-yard line, because you become very predictable and uh, UCF is just ganging up and making sure that they stop the run. No gain on the play for Galloway. Still second and 10. Bow on the rollout. Completes it to McCadley, who takes a wicked shot, but hangs on. Uh, Shante Samuel really laid the lumber to in that time, but a great grab by McCadley. Great, great pass by Andrew Zhao. Zhao rolling into his right again, and he's usually not too effective doing that, but today, today anyway. But that one was right on the money. But uh, Asante Samuel tattooed him just as he received the football. First down, Bama. Out to the 21-yard line. Four wide receivers for Alabama. Andrew with time, deep down the middle, that one a little overthrown, off the fingertips of Jason McCadley. Rico Joseph was in the neighborhood. Take a look, Zhao out of the shotgun, McCadley was wide open down the middle, but he was overthrown and therefore could not make the catch. A very subdued crowd here in Tuscaloosa. In the Golden so. Knights try and spoil homecoming. Second and ten and five wide receivers. Quick throw behind Millen and incomplete. 
And the fans really getting restless. The homecoming crowd expressing their displeasure. Andrew again with an errant pass. Got it away quickly because he was under pressure from a blitzing Golden Knight front four. And then threw it behind Millens. Millens never had a shot at it. And uh, Andrew is perhaps becoming a little frustrated. Ty just two of seven on third down today. They need ten yards. Pressure comes. Al gets it away. Intercepted again. Damian Demps with the pick and takes it inside the Alabama 25-yard line. Not a good pass by Andrew Zao. Way over the intended receiver's head. You can take a look. Out of the shotgun. He's uh, getting a little pressure, then throws it way over AC's head, right into the free safety's hand. And uh, Demps has no problem returning that one. Got it back inside the 25-yard line. And Doug, how long do you stay with Andrew Zhao if you're Mike Dubos? I just don't know. It, uh, it's going to be a tough call, but uh, something needs to, because he's obviously just getting uh, more frustrated, more frustrated, and as a consequence, it's just uh, self-destructive. Baker dancing around on the inside for a couple of yards to the 21. Now he's in a mode, Andrew's out probably. He's really pressing so hard, trying so hard to make something happen that the opposite is happening. And Snyder's very relaxed, having a nice outing. No pressure whatsoever. Under four minutes to play now in the third quarter. Knights lead by seven and look for more. Snyder goes far side to Davis, who's open. Out of bounds, inside the 10, Marcus Spencer slings him out, but it will be first and goal, UCF. Snyder that time, again, getting uh, plenty of time, really. Rifles it out on an out pattern, and it is complete to Davis, and Marcus Spencer reacts after the ball is thrown and rolls him out of bounds, but he picked up a first down inside the 10. Omari Howard checks in to the backfield. Gets the quick handoff. And not much room on the inside. Dropped right at the line of scrimmage by a host of tied defenders. The Alabama front that time really jammed the offensive line of UCF and stopped that play before it even materialized good. It looked like for a moment that Snyder may be calling for a timeout, but no, now he's getting the signal you can see from the assistant coach on the sideline. They're calling it by hand signal. Second and goal from the nine, and the Alabama defense really needs to step up here after the fifth turnover by the Crimson Tide offense. Snyder into the end zone, incomplete. Looking for Tavares Davis. Reggie Miles in the coverage. Looked like somebody may have gotten a hand on that ball. We'll take a check. There's the throw from Snyder. And uh, it could have it could have been touched that time, I believe, by uh, Connie Brown. I'm not sure. He jumped up for it, and he might have tipped it a little bit. So Davis never had a shot at the reception. Throwing it about as much as folks thought they would this afternoon. Third and goal from the nine. Big, big play for the tie. Blitz comes. Snyder, sack. Antoine Odom got him. That's something that Alabama needed to do today, and that's put pressure on Snyder. They haven't been able to a whole a lot of time, but they do that time. It finally broke down, and Antoine Odom Ran him down from behind and dropped him for the sack. Uh, they can, he can be sacked with good coverage. And as a matter of fact, I really coming into the ball game thought that Alabama's defense would be able to sack him. Some confusion on the special teams by Alabama and 
suspend a timeout so they can get the proper number of people on the field. The special teams have uh, come in for a lot of praise today, so they felt they wanted to be a part of the overall picture. And so that was the call. I'm sure they had uh, the wrong number of guys out on the field and had to call the timeout. There's uh, Coach Ellis Johnson uh, checking things to make sure the next time that they go out, Alabama will have the proper number and be able to defend against the field goal attempt. Mention Antoine Odom. For those who follow Alabama baseball, remember Dan Chavers, who finished up a year ago. Dan, a couple of years ago, had about 10 hits all season, and five of them were home runs. His average was about 50-50. Every, every two swings of the bat was a home run for it. That's kind of how Odom is. He came in with six tackles on the year, two tackles for a loss, two sacks. Not too shabby. He's had a couple of sacks here today. So now the field goal try for Javier Berlegi. A 28-yarder. From dead on in the middle. Low, but good. And the lead is now 10. So five turnovers on the day by the Alabama offense have led to 20 points for UCF. Mike Dubose visiting with Andrew Zhao, Jonathan Ritchie, the backup. He also signals in the plays. He's loosening up with his headset still on, he's doing still, it all. He's still got his headset on, still sending the plays in. But he is getting ready and it's, if a change is made. I think the change is about to be made. I think uh, Coach Dubose is patting him on the shoulder, saying good work. Uh, that's fine, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. It's got to be a gutsy move by Coach Dubose and uh, Charlie Stubbs, the quarterback coach. But the final say, though, is that gentleman right there. He's the guy that must say yay or nay. So we'll see if a change indeed is forthcoming at the quarterback spot. It's also going to be devastating, I would think, for Alabama fans when we get the, fourth, the third quarter statistics and we check time of possession. Louisiana Tech came to Bryant-Denny in 97 and rained on the parade, and the Golden Knights trying to do it again today. That stat was the mind-boggler there. The most points ever scored on Alabama in a homecoming. to Ray to bring it out. Can't get it back to the 20. Well, what, what has happened? Uh, we've got a Golden Knights squad that is really fired up, David. They are the, they are seeing a light at the end of a tunnel, something they, they did not expect to beat Alabama. They thought they'd come in here and may play hard, but they could not beat Alabama deep in their heart of hearts. But they're leading by 10, and Alabama offense has not been able to do anything thus far in this half. And now remains in at quarterback. And even two minutes to go in the third quarter. The give to Galloway, and he will go nowhere. Tito Rodriguez tracked him down and tackles him right at the line of scrimmage. Here we go. Zal with the handoff to Ahmad Galloway and Tito Rodriguez Tracks him down, zeroes in, and drops him for no gain on the play. Matter of fact, he may have lost a half a yard. Rodriguez is a very, very active linebacker for the Golden Knights. Second down and 10. Zhao on the rollout. In trouble. Will pick up a couple of yards on the play, but eventually brought down by Jake McKibben. And one of the Knights still down. So three guys out to the, his right that time. That's why he was looking to his right. He was thinking uh, to get the completion. We have a, a UCF player injured on the field, and uh, Zhao will probably be more reluctant here in this uh, half to throw the football. 
because of what had transpired early on. Fred Harley is the man down and in obvious pain right now. The medical staff out to check on him. 105 to play in the game. And Mike Kruzek's squad has ridden the roller coaster along with Alabama. The early lead trailing by two touchdowns and now leading again by 10. Yep, Pete, uh, he was talking earlier in the week and made the statement that, you know, one of these days, one of these teams, we're going to beat somebody. Just don't know when. Of uh, the uh, From a name conference, a big conference, a name school. And of course, this would be a real feather in their cap to beat Alabama. And it would mean something, I'm sure, quite special to Steve Sloan. We said 0-9 against the Southeastern Conference all time, but in those losses, an overtime loss at Ole Miss where they went for two in the overtime period to try and win the game. Losing to South Carolina in Columbia, 33-31 back in 97. Losing 10-6 at Auburn in 98. Losing 24-23 to Georgia last year in Athens and losing 28-10 at Auburn last year after they led late in that ball game. That's correct, and almost pulled off one against Georgia Tech in the opening game of this season in Atlanta, yes. But right now, though, we're concerned with Alabama trailing by 10 points with almost uh, one, just one quarter left. Harley is up and being helped off the field very gingerly. Not putting much weight on that right leg. Been a physical game so far. You wouldn't think that by the score, but there have been some licks passed out. That's right, and uh, also by the type of team that uh, UCF is, a pat mostly passing-oriented uh, team. That's more of a finesse team. That's not a physical type of approach to the game, but they would have been passing some licks today. Third and eight from the 21. Zao, the deep drop, flushed out. Ducks his head as he crosses the 25, but still four yards shy of the first down as Elliott Shorter is credited with the tackle. And it will be fourth down and punting time. Again, uh, Andrew may get a, a little, he's probably a little nervous about pulling the trigger now. And he was quick to pull that down and run with the football. That is not one of his strong suits. So it'll be fourth down and Bearden's going to punt it away. Asante Samuel, the deep man. He stands at his own 35-yard line. Pressure comes, but Bearden gets it away. Another good kick. Samuel will make the catch, a fair catch, at the 28-yard line. So Lane Bearden continues his good work. He is really striking the ball that seems very well the last couple of games. Well, that was a great kick that time, and uh, he's greeted by the coaches on the sideline. 36-yard punt officially, but a very effective one. It drove Samuel back so that he had no chance, really, to make a return on it. And Bearden celebrating a birthday today. Not enjoying it right now. No, he's not. Uh, happy birthday nonetheless, Lane. First and 10 for UCF at their own 28. Baker in the backfield. He gets the handoff. Again, tiptoeing, waiting for something to open up. Finds a little daylight before Darius Gilbert brings him down. And we have come to the end of the third quarter. As we head to the fourth, Alabama trails by 10. UCF trying to spoil homecoming. 34-24, Golden Knights. Learn science via satellite. A new graduate finds a friend in an unfamiliar place. A rural mother is thankful for long-needed medical help. A freshman learns that her teacher is also her friend. The University of Alabama. 
touching lives and making a difference around the world and right next door. Final 15 minutes for Brian Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. David Crane along with Doug Layton, Chris Stewart also with us. Down on the sidelines. Andrew Zhao visiting with Charlie Stubbs via the headset. Stubbs upstairs calling the plays. Neil Calloway, the offensive coordinator, also up in the box looking down and trying to find something. The running game was going early on, but Golden Knights have done a little bit better job of subduing that. The turnovers. And the turnovers have been the killer. That's right. The turnovers. You can't keep throwing the interception and fumbling the football. You get beat out regardless of who you play. Second down. Play action. The pass complete to Henshaw outside. With some blockers in front, Tyson Henshaw darts out to the 43-yard line. Connie Brown on the stop, but that will be good for the first down. Excellent play by the quarterback, Snyder. He quickly, after a step back, gets it out to Tyson Henshaw. He is, uh, he is a local boy. He's from Orlando, and he stayed at home right there to play for the Golden uh, Knights, and he is their leading pass receiver. First and ten for UCF. Howard, the ball carrier this time. Slides through for a gain of four, almost five yards on first down. Marcus Spencer that time coming up to make the stop for Alabama. But uh, not before he picked up. About three, four yards on the play. Maybe five. And uh, you wonder, watching this, UCF leading by 10 early in the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, we've gone to the run attack. They give again to Howard, protecting the ball, covering up. Takes it into Alabama territory at the tied 48-yard line, setting up a third and short. That could be the uh, secret for Alabama, and that is UCF going into a prevent mo mode and uh, get out of the game plan of throwing the football around. Third down, two yards to keep the drive going. Alabama defense needs to come through with a stop. The pitch back. To Baker stretches the ball out. Does he have the first down? It depends on the spot. The Alabama fans don't like it, but we'll see. Here we go. He stretched out with the football at the last moment, and uh, Salim Rashid is the guy that wrapped him up, and it was on the marker there. But you got to bring the chains from across to measure because that marker there is one just placed by the official. It's just by guess. He looks across the way and he tries to get it right. So that's just an indication of how far you need to go for the first down. Now here are the chains. They will tell the story. They'll stretch it out in front of the Golden Knights bench. And it's a first down. The Big play stretch, that time. The stretch by Baker got the first down. That's right. When Rashid wrapped him up, Baker stretched as far as he could with the ball. You can do that. It's not where you are. It's where the ball is when your knees hit the ground. You know, it's a first down, and if they score now on this drive, that would be absolutely humongous. Fresh set of downs for the Golden Knights. Bama creeps up. Here comes the blitz. Schneider gets it away. Henshaw wide open, makes the grab, and down at the Alabama 14-yard line. Connie Brown, Marcus Spencer in coverage, but that ball placed right on the money by Ryan Schneider. When you get the ball, when you throw it that well to that guy, number 13, Tyson Henshaw, 
He will not miss it. He will make the catch. He gets up a little slowly after being hammered down, but a big he's not up yet. But a big, big play that time by the Golden Knights that puts them in position at the Alabama 14. 32 yards on the pickup. He came down awfully hard on that shoulder and may have re-injured it, may have simply had his breath knocked out of him. Having another good day for the Golden Knights. Two touchdown grabs, but he will come off momentarily. Seven grabs by Henshaw, 84 yards on the day. And a first down after the 32-yard pickup. And he went by Mark Nonsant and Bernard Ford into seventh place in the all-time reception list at UCF with now 71 catches. And he's not a big guy either. It's not like he's nope. out jumping people. It's a... It's just nice a, team effort between Schneider and Henshaw. He's uh, he's only he's about uh, six feet tall, but he runs excellent routes, and he weighs only 170 pounds. First down at the Alabama 14. Baker over the left side takes it to the 10, where he's stacked up and dropped. You look at this UCF offense. You see him throwing it all over the field, but their drives today have not only covered a lot of ground, they have used a lot of the clock, and that's obviously what they're trying to do right now. That's what I'm saying. In the, in the third quarter, uh, it's had to be big. 89 points in the last two games. 55 nothing over Louisiana Monroe, 34 to 3 over Eastern Kentucky. to Baker. Nowhere to go that time. Dropped at the 10. No gain on the play. It will this, set up third and five. This close in, that play by Baker was one that uh, UCF needed to get the ball right in the middle of the field because it is a tremendous angle from the, um, from the hash marks when you're in this close if you're going to try a field goal later. 10-point lead for UCF. They have been lethal on third downs in the second half. They're six out of seven since halftime. Schneider will let the play clock tick as far down as he can and then call a timeout. He wasn't going to get the playoff, so he let the clock go as far as he could to Heads up make a positive out of something. 11-10 sure. to play in the fourth quarter. Ten-point deficit for Alabama. Hey, Coach, comes your way Monday night live from the Wayne Sports Grill. We'll be talking Alabama football, Alabama basketball, maybe even a little Alabama volleyball as Judy Green's club got a big win over Auburn last night at Coleman Coliseum. Join us Monday live from the Wayne Sports Grill here in Tuscaloosa on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. I may not look like it, but I'm a big volleyball nut. I love to watch volleyball games. They're great. I have to say you don't look like it. I don't look like a I don't I do not look like a volleyball aficionado. <laughs> but count me in on the ball. I like it. <laughs> Alabama in first place in the SEC Western Division in volleyball and Judy Green's club having a great, great season. Another third down situation for the Tide defense. And it's a 10-point lead right now. The difference in 13 and 10, not real great, but the difference in 17 and 13 in this situation could be. Crowd trying to help out. Schneider on play action all day to throw. He goes in the end zone, incomplete. Frazell had it in his hands for a split second, but it goes incomplete. And Snyder's got all day, as you can see, David. Uh, Alabama not getting to him, but he threw it right into double coverage. Good play that time by Alabama defensively. He got rid of it right at the last moment because Alabama was in on him by another second or so. So this will be a 27-yard attempt by Borlegi. 
two for two already. Kick on the way, and the kick is good. And with 11.01 to play in the game, it's now a 37-24 lead for the Golden Knights. So Not the, an insurmountable lead, but a formidable lead with just 11 minutes to go. For an offense that has been shut out so far here in the second half. That is true. Uh, because uh, UCF has really been throwing the points at Alabama since uh, the end of the first half. Golden Knights 10th in America in passing, and they have been effective today. Three touchdown passes by Ryan Schneider, a defensive touchdown for the Golden Knights. And Alabama answering with a defensive score. It's been a bizarre game, to say the least. Time of possession with the turnovers in the second half really turning in favor of UCF. Well, the uh, that's for the whole game, but uh, you can bet it's way, way lopsided for UCF in the third period. You saw Snyder walking down the line, patting his offensive lineman on the shoulders, telling him, good work, let's keep it up. The ball game isn't over. But uh, they are awfully excited right now. Alabama has got to get something going offensively. Ray and Richard, the twin deep men for the Crimson Tide. Three. Out across the 20s, filled near the 22-yard line. Thad Ward, the special teams tackle for UCF. Alabama in the second half, just three first downs. And the offense comes back out on the field. Andrew Bow is the guy at the helm. Three first downs, three turnovers by the offense in the second half. No, and no points. Triple stack to the near side on first down. Zow completes it to Miller. We'll try and make something happen. Ready out across the 30. Near the 34, and that'll be a first down. That's the uh, most productive that particular play has been today. And uh, you know that UCF knew what was going, but we had some good blocking going on downfield by A.C. and Sam Collins to keep uh, Millen alive, and he picked up the first down. The turnovers absolutely devastating to Alabama. The total offense in the second half way out of kilter, Zal pumping, throwing, caught, Trey Fulgham with some running room. Down the sideline, Fulgham steps out at the 20. His first catch of the year. Zal that time looked like he hated to do it, but he had to throw it, and he's looking, he's looking, and now he spots Drew and gets him the ball, and he shakes the first tackler, and there he goes, off to the races. Big first down play, and that's got to be a good confidence builder for Andrew Zhao to get that completion under his belt. The freshman from Montevallo, his first career grab, a 46-yard pickup, and Alabama's in business at the UCF 20. A lot of time to go. Galloway. Gets the handoff, and will pick up only a yard. Taken down by Tito Rodriguez on the play, and Ahmad a little slow in getting up. In fact, still down on the play. A little surprised we haven't seen Brandon Myrie here in the second half. Don't know if he is a little nicked up. I don't know. We'll check him uh, on the sideline and see. That's right, because he came on in the first half and did quite well for Alabama. And now, there's Myrie coming in in answer to our qu our query. He's into the ball game. Ahmad a little wobbly as he makes his way to the Alabama bench. There you see Myrie checking in. He had a 37-yard touchdown run in the first half. Really seemed to be a spark for the offense. 
Under 10 minutes to play. A 13-point lead for Central Florida. Second and nine as the Golden Knights crowd the line. Pressure comes. Now escapes one man, throws it up for grabs. Incomplete, but a flag is down. The, the pass from Zhao was anybody's ball, and I think the call is going to be against uh, UCF for coming over Sam Collins. I think he was the intended receiver. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Take a look. Zao goes back, fakes it to Myrie in the play action. It looks like for a moment that Zao's going to run himself and then tries to get it to Collins. Good call by the official that time. That ball up for grabs, but Alabama with the 15-yard step off will have it first and goal at the four. Myrie in the backfield gets the handoff. Lowers his shoulder and pulls his way to the two. Breaking down quickly and getting the first shot at Myrie that time was uh, Rico Joseph, I believe. But he never had a chance. Myrie was wrapped up around his leg almost at the line of scrimmage as he turned up field. Clock continues to move. Put ball just inside the three, officially. Tide goes with two tight ends. and an eye formation, McClintock in front of Brandon Myrie. Brandon gets it, and he's ridden down at the two. Golden Knights stingy on defense. Jake McKibben the stop. They held Louisiana Monroe to minus 20 yards rushing last weekend. Here's Myrie, and the Alabama offensive line uh, could not do anything with the, the front of UCF as they shed the blockers and got in the flow of things and stopped him for no gain. Third and goal. Draper comes into motion. Pitch it back to Galloway, who checks back in. He cuts it up and scores. Big play that time by Alabama. Thanks for the pass interference call that put him in business at the UCF three. They got it into the end zone. Here's the toss from Zhao. Galloway with a good move that time. Trots into the end zone untouched. Neil Thomas. For the extra point. And it's now a six point. UCF lead, 37 31. Another look at the score. Galloway with a great move that time into the end zone. Good blocking that time. The lead blockers, there's Hogan down there. Travis Fisher left sprawling on the ground as Galloway cut it up. Takes it in for the touchdown. 37-31. 8.08 to play in the fourth quarter. Now a six-point lead for the Golden Knights. Still a lot of time to go. Both sides doing a little barking on the sidelines. UCF trying to keep what momentum they have and Alabama trying to steal it all away. That's right, the, the folks on the UCF side of the field probably for a while there, when they were up by 13, uh, says, hey, we can win this ball game. And now all of a sudden they realize they got to score again in order to do so because Alabama just needs a touchdown and an extra point to take the lead. Neil Thomas to kick it off. And you notice that, David, the crowd is back. Comes down at the two. Samuel trips as he crosses the 20. So the Golden Knights will start at the 21-yard line. The offense 
comes to life. First points of the second half for the Alabama offense. Makes it a six-point deficit, and now time for the defense to answer the bell, and this crowd is very quickly back into the ball game. And, of course, the defensive lineman, uh, Aries Monroe, and his cohorts are urging him on. Schneider starts in the shotgun. As loud as we've heard it all day. Play action. Schneider goes deep. It is incomplete, but a flag is down. And pass interference coming against the tie. I guess it was Kelp Bailey over there again. He's the guy they've been going at most all afternoon. Tavares Davis, I believe, the intended receiver. Pass interference against the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot will be an automatic first down. The Alabama defense has been awfully generous to the UCF Golden Eagle, a uh, Golden uh, Knights today. And I didn't see the pass interference, but that was the call. Flags came in immediately against Kelp Bailey. So it's a 15 yard step off, another one of those against Alabama. First down from the 36. Schneider in the air and incomplete. Big pop that time by Reggie Miles to jar it loose. Had Reggie waited about um, a manosecond more, it would have been a completion. And it would have been a fumble, but instead, he never had control, and so the official ruled it an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 for UCF, and here comes the crowd again. Bama comes with the blitz. Incomplete. Kenny Clark, the intended receiver, he wonders where the flag is on that play, but none on the field. He was looking for a flag. Good pressure that time by Darius Gilbert, and that was Miles, I guess. It went up and over the top at uh, right at the point of the pit. Yeah, and slapped the ball away. It'll be third down, and 10 of the crowd has really caught fever here. 7.41 to play in the game. Another important third down. Snyder with time. Caught and a first down. Nice grab by Jimmy Frizzell into Alabama territory at the 43, and he is not getting up. He took a shot, but he made the clutch catch. I think he just fell, went down hard, but uh, watch this pass from Ryan Snyder. He really hit him right on the numbers between. Oh, he did get a, take a snap that time from uh, Brown. and uh, But a, what a perfect strike right between two defenders for the first down. He held on to the ball, though, and you can see his, uh, all the grass on his helmet. Oops. Connie Brown said, welcome to the SEC. Frazell, the sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. And his bell may be ringing for a couple of days after that. Ooh. Yeah, he'll be up. Uh, he'll be up a lot of the nights an answering the door. Chris. <laughs> Guys, I tell you what, this has been about as far to hitting a game in the secondary as I've seen all season long. Both teams, wide receivers, have taken some vicious shots, clean shots, but vicious shots from the uh, opposing secondaries all throughout the afternoon. And we talked about it, Doug. You see this high-scoring game, and you probably think a lot of, you know, finesse, big plays or whatever. Oh, but yeah. It's really been a physical game. He really has. There's uh, Frizzell. He spells his name a little differently than the famous singer Lefty Frizzell. F-R-Y-Z-E-L. And I'd be willing to bet he is more than ready to go shoot his free throws right now. I would bet so, too. 
from the tide, 43. That's a big, big first down for UCF. But the crowd comes right back. To the ground game. Straight ahead running by Baker inside the 40. Driven back after he reaches the 37th. Marcus Spencer and a few others in crimson jerseys with the tackle. If you're a Golden Knight fan, you got to be sort of pleased with that draw because it, one, picked up about six yards on the play on first down, and two, it kept the clock running. Right now, the clock is a very dear friend of this team from Orlando. And the defense must come through with a hold here. Second down, along four. Baker gets the call again. Ball is loose on the field. No, they'll say his knee was down before it came out. A two-yard pickup to the 25. Let's see. Milo Lewis bounced on it uh, the minute it happened. Well, I couldn't see when it came loose, but uh, the official then, there, there you go. Yeah. Very close. And, well, anyway, they say he was down, so. Line judge right there, and he never hesitated. Yep, and it's, so it's third down, and they need a couple for the first down. Big play coming up here for both squads. Tide fans getting a look on the replay screen didn't think much of the call. But it sets up third and two from the 35. Schneider throws. It is incomplete. Off the hands of Milo Lewis. Henshaw screaming for a flag, but he doesn't get one. And it's now fourth and two. Snyder throws it behind Henshaw. Milo Lewis, had he been looking, could have made the interception, I think. The time, by the time he turned around, the ball was already on him. And all he could do was knock it down. So it's fourth down, and that's probably out of the range of their kicker. At the 35, fourth and two, and the Golden Knights will go for it. They are out of timeouts with five and a half minutes to go. This could be your ball game right here. Long snap count. Are they going to go for it? Bam is not moving, and the play clock expires. One of the older tricks in football, try to get the defense to jump and thereby giving you a first down but the Alabama defense didn't move and the play clock expired and we assume Prior it'll be snap, delay a game. Delay a game against the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So now UTF will have to punt the football. Borleggi averaging 42 yards a kick. He will try and pin Alabama deep. There's Freddie Millens. He awaits at the 10. Low snap again for Leggy. Gets it away, which was object number one. Does it get in the end zone? Yes, it does. Just barely crosses the goal line. And so Alabama will have it at the 20. With 5.24 to play in the game. And a 37-31 UCF lead. So Alabama can take this ball now and drive it downfield, score a touchdown, kick the extra point, and get out of here with a one-point victory. Preferably with a drive that takes five minutes and 23 seconds. Exactly. Tied with two timeouts to work with. Should it need him? From the 20. Trips to the far side. McAdley, the lone receiver, to the near side. Zow, the quick throw to Miller. Spilled as he gains three on the play. Travis Fisher upending Freddie. You take a look at this play, Zow with a quick out to Millens on the right side and you say well he, they've done that and it's thrown right at the line of scrimmage and he only picked up three or four on the play but you're hoping that Millens the talent that he is 
might break that thing for major distance, and he's capable of doing that. The four interceptions could be the difference in this ball game. Zao bobbled and dropped. Arvin Richard had it jarred loose after he juggled it momentarily. That'll set up a third and seven. Zao getting good protection by his offensive line that time. Hit his receiver, but uh, the receiver was hit concomitantly with the ball. Incomplete. Tied just three out of ten, converting third downs. They need seven yards to move the chain. Millens comes in motion. The screen pass to Carter with blockers. They see the first down out across the 40 to the 42. When that play is run properly, as it was then by the Alabama offense, you cannot stop it. You've got a screen set up, and then AC breaks down underneath that for the slant pass, and he's off to the races. He gets by that, that tackler. He's in the end zone. 19 yards to pick up for AC. And a first down for Alabama. Andrew Zhao is going to have to spend a timeout because the Tide had 12 men on the field. Jason McAdley tried to sprint off, but lucky to avoid a penalty there. Timeout, 4.20 to go, 37-31. Stay up to date on all Alabama athletics at RollTide.com, official athletic website of the University of Alabama. New stats scored from every Crimson Tide athletic team. You can follow events live on the Internet and listen to the Crimson Tide Sports Network broadcast. All of that at RollTide.com. Six-point lead for the visiting Golden Knights with 4.20 to play. Everybody loves a little fun on homecoming, but they prefer not to have an exciting game, I think, Doug. That's right, but uh, the team is trying to note that it is almost Halloween, so let's put a little scare in the Bama fans before homecoming is over. A look at the career passing yards at Alabama. Andrew closing in on second place held by Scott Hunter. After the timeout, it's a first down for Alabama at the 42. Trips to the near side and the throw to Michael James with blockers in front. He'll scamper in to UCF territory and step out of bounds at the 43. Excellent play action that time. That froze the linebackers. They couldn't get out to the outside because you see the fake. The linebackers took a step to the left, and that left uh, James wide open on the left side. And excellent blocking downfield. Big play for Andrew Zhao in the tie. Just outside the 43-yard line, another first down. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near. And the handoff to Galloway. He goes nowhere. Dropped for a loss on the play by Josh McKibben. And the Golden Knights were ready for the run. McKibben gets in the Alabama backfield. Uh, he sheds a blocker and takes on Galloway and drops him. Big play that time by Josh McGiven. Clock continues to run. He's not all that big, uh, only about 265, but none of these guys for UCF up front are very large. Second and 13, the sprint out by Zhao. He's going to go deep. McCadley is there. He's got it down at the 15. And a flag down in the Alabama backfield. It may be a late hit against the Golden Knights. Tide fans hope so anyway. That's what, uh, but you're going to hear a scream if it is offensive holding. Nope, it's personal. Late hit on the quarterback. That was a big play, and 
Zal must have thrown the football about 50 or 60 yards down the left side of the field. And uh, McCadley makes the grab. But, we have a uh, completion. We also have a personal foul against the defense. Elbow to the head. Half the distance. First down. Uh huh. That was after the play. Tack on the penalty. That was not a roughing the kicker. Uh, passer. 32 yard pickup, and then they'll add seven and a half more Whoa. on the step off. Boy, the best throw of the day by Andrew Zell. Without question. Boy, that young man has had a, has had a roller coaster year. As a matter of fact, he's had a roller coaster day today. From just inside the UCF eight, it's first and goal. Draper slides into motion, pitch back to Galloway, slips down outside the ten. He'll lose almost four yards on the play. Not a good play right now. It's uh, slow developing, and uh, there's nothing there. And then when Galloway tried to make the cut, he slipped down. And I think uh, the Golden Knights guys were in position to maybe stop him for no gain anyway, but he lost, as it were. Given forward progress, back to near the 10. So it's second and goal from the 10. Now on play action. Looks for McClintock. He's got it. Big red. Scores! Putting down Alabama. Justin McClintock. With the reception from Andrew Zhao for the touchdown. What a... Well, here we go. There's the play action uh, pass to, uh, to Galloway. Then he drops back and Gets it to McClintock, who dives over, extending the ball into the end zone. The extra point would give Alabama the lead. Thomas is perfect. Two twenty-four to play in the game. Don't you know? 38-37. And the Tide, perhaps a little bit of a break. It looked like Big Red stepped out at the three. Well, they would have made it next down. Exactly. Chris Stewart. It's a little more enjoyable now. It certainly is, David. A little more festive here on the sidelines and in the stands. I know earlier the fans and maybe even the three of us were wondering why Mike DeVos stayed with Andrew Zell after he struggled so badly this afternoon. But we saw on that last drive exactly why he did. That's a young man who's been in so many big games for Alabama, has won so many games in the final moments. It's so tough to put an inexperienced guy like Jonathan Ritchie in that type of situation. Andrew Zhao and his offensive teammates responding, and Alabama back on top. But still, a lot of time for Central Florida. 2.24 to play, the Alabama scoring drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, and even three minutes. Yeah, that's why I said it would have been a gutty move by uh, Coach Dubos to send an uh, inexperienced guy in. And Zao has been there. And all he needed to do was really settle down and start feeling a little more confident. And apparently he started doing that. And that was just a big, big, monumentally drive for him, that 80-yard drive. Now time for the defense to finish the job. Thomas. Boots it away. Samuel from the two. Out across the 20. Maybe the 21. Taken down by Carlos Andrew. So Ryan Schneider and the UCF offense. Two minutes, 15 seconds to play. No timeouts. But they only need a field goal to win it. That's correct. And uh, they've shown... Uh, not that much confidence in their kicker. Career long for Berlegi is a 48-yarder. 
on first down. Snyder all day to throw, swings it out to Baker. Flips one tackler and moves the ball out to the 28-yard line. The throw from Snyder to Baker, but watch the Alabama defenders wrap him up. That's Victor Ellis right there. And now they've got him. They will not let him get to the sidelines. They do not want the clock to stop. 145 and counting. Second and two. Snyder completes the pass to Frizzell along the sideline. He'll step out at the 34, and that's good for the first down. It kills the clock with 137 to play. He probably needs to get down somewhere around the 25-yard line in that area, the 30 maybe, for a field goal that uh, Borlegi might be able to make. First down at the UCF 34. Good protection. Snyder goes deep. It is incomplete. Kenny Clark, the intended receiver, but pretty good coverage by Marcus Spencer, and the ball just slightly overthrown. Yeah, Marcus is the guy that almost caught this ball. He was the closest to it. As you can see, Snyder unloading deep, and there's Marcus just overthrown a bit. He ran all the way over, up against the fence, and said hello to a friend. Snyder's numbers on the day, 255 yards. Pressure comes on second down. Baker out of the backfield, makes the catch. Dives for the first down marker. They'll spot him out at the 43, a little bit shy of the marker. Kemp Bailey was the Alabama defender over there. He really broke to the ball beautifully. And uh, as to whether he got the first down or not, I don't know. Let's wait and see. Yes, he did. Nope. A yard shy. Okay. Third and one. UCF 9 out of 17 on third down so far today. Four down territory for sure for the Golden Knights. Howard will run it and have the first down. Dives across the 45 to the 47. That will stop the clock momentarily with a minute 21 to go. Well, that'll give them time to get uh, up to the line of scrimmage and set up before the clock gets cranked up again. Golden Knights with the first down. They restart the clock. His forward progress is stopped. They'll say he stayed in bounds at the 46, and the clock keeps rolling. Under a minute to play. That play wound up losing a couple of yards. Second down and 12. Snyder. No pressure. Unloads it complete to Henshaw. Down at the 36, that will be good for a first down. Bama just can't get to Ryan Snyder right now. They really can't. That'll stop the clock momentarily as they move the chain. They need to put pressure on Snyder to make him hurry his throws, but they haven't been able to do so. And Snyder has been very, very accurate on this drive. From the Alabama, 36. Snyder to the sideline. It is complete. Tavares Davis makes the grab, steps out, killing the clock. 33-yard line. So right now you're staring at a 50-yarder for Javier Berlegi. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I think I think they need to get around the, to the 30 at least, hopefully close to the 20, to have a field goal that you think your guy has a chance of making. And of course Alabama wants to stop that and keep them in bounds. 28 seconds, and again, no timeouts for the Golden Knights. Second down, here comes the blitz. Borlegi throws, flag is down, a catch is made by Frizzell. He's out at the 26, but check the marker. 
If that pass interference against Alabama, that should put them within field goal range. But let's wait and see. What a wild finish this ball game is giving it. Holding against Alabama. I'll say again, I liked Alabama scoring. They may have done it too quickly. True. Because uh, with no timeout left, here we've got the uh, goal Holding of the night. on the defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And they've got 24 seconds left on the clock when they took over. They only had, what, a, hundred, a minute and 50 or something like that. So at any rate, they're pretty close to field goal range for Bolegi now. This would be a 40-yarder if he kicked it now. It's hit the 23. 10th play of the drive. They've taken two minutes off the clock. 24 seconds left in the game. The draw to Baker. That's a little surprising. He takes it to the 20. So now the Knights will have to get up and spike it to kill the clock. Schneider gets it, spikes it. Six seconds to go, and they send on the field goal unit. If Borlegi makes this, this will be a monumental upset for the Golden Knights. Borlegi on to win it. But first, Alabama will take a timeout and let Javier Borlegi, the junior from Merritt Island, Florida, think about it just a little bit. Sort of like icing the free throw shooter. Just gives him a moment to think about it. And most field goal kickers are loners by nature. And on a timeout like this, they don't go with their brethren and stand around in a huddle. They go off somewhere by themselves to concentrate and keep their mind on what they've got to do. In this case, Javier Borlegi must kick a field goal that should be somewhere in the area of a 36 or 7 yarder. There you see his career long, 48 yards. He's 3 for 3 today. Six seconds to play. Here is your ball game. Could be the biggest win in UCF history. Absolutely. If this one goes through the uprights. Frizzell is the holder. Angle to his left for Berlegi. It will be a 37-yard try to win it. The kick on the way. The kick is good. A flag is down as Alabama was off sides on the kick. There may be another flag down as the entire Golden Knights team has poured out onto the field. But still, three seconds remain. The ball game is not over. And now a flag comes in for celebration. On the try, the defense was off sides. The penalty is declined. The field goal is good. We're going to assess a 15-yard unsportsmanlike on Central Florida on the kickoff. Well, that uh, is a penalty that does not save the Golden Knights of Orlando, Florida, of the University of Central Florida. They prefer to be called UCF. Three ticks on the clock. It's amazing that uh, the biggest victory in the history of this young school football program comes against the athletic director's alma mater. And Alabama is going to have to rethink its homecoming opponents. Louisiana Tech got the biggest win in their school's history three years ago. Central Florida UCF is going to do the same on homecoming 2000 for Alabama. Unless... Lightning can strike on the kickoff return. It can happen. But uh, 
It does not get easier with LSU and Baton Rouge, and the Tigers are playing with renewed confidence at home now. And then it's never pleasant to go to Starkville, Mississippi, even if you're going over to visit relatives. <laughs> I wasn't going to say. But you're right. So the 15-yard step-off against UCF means Berlecki will have to kick from his own 20. Berlecki, line drive kick. Sean Toure will pick it up at the 35. Ray trying to turn the corner. Now will reverse field. And he may have some blockers in front of him. Trip. A lateral. Play still alive. Ball game is over. And now the ball game will come to an end at some point. Flags are down all over the place. It was a forward lateral. Galloway with the football. And finally, the roller coaster ride comes to an end. Only fitting for this game to end on a play like that. What a display. I think the first lateral was an illegal forward pass. It was, and the ball game is over. UCF. What a bizarre finish. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! The Golden Knights have come to Tuscaloosa and pulled off an upset. 38 for the Tide, but 40 for the Golden Knights. Alabama falls to 3-5 and five on the year. UCF moves to 6-3. and three. Mike Kruzek, biggest win in UCF history. For the Tide, it's off to LSU. Next Saturday, a 2.30 kickoff on CBS. For the Golden Knights, they travel to Rushton and will take on Louisiana Tech. And I would imagine it'll be a little hard to bounce back from this win. Kruzak and company will celebrate. Mike Dubos and the Tide will go back to work. See what they can come up with for next week. Absolutely. Before the game, I visited with Steve Sloan. I said, are you being treated nicely? He said, I've never been treated so nicely as I have on this trip here to Tuscaloosa. I don't think he realized what was in the office. 40 to 38, the final. Central Florida has beaten Alabama on homecoming. For Chris Stewart and Doug Layton, I'm David Crane. Thanks for being with us. Golden Knights win it over the Tide, 40-38. to 38. Good evening from Bryant-Denny Stadium.